Theory and Mola. What's the situation? And Ryan. Welcome and Ryan. Another, do another Star Grift. This is our last show until we uh, conclude all of the seasons for uh, the shows that are coming out. Uh, and then we'll do like a you know, like a one at one off episode recap. But uh yeah, welcome to the final episode of Stargrift. So mm. what's up, boys? The final Dude. one. You know what they say though, no one's ever really gone. I mean, this right. is a Star Wars show after all. Right. It's pretty much everyone. Damn right. The best I always quote. <laughs> they they have really taken that as their mantra, I feel like, uh, at Lucasfilm. No one's ever really gone. Especially if they're a female character. So. Yeah. You know, in retrospect, uh, there's such a troll in it that they put that in the trailer for Rise of Skywalker and then you hear the Palpatine laughing. And you're like, are you fucking kidding? <laughs> like, what? what are you doing? <laughs> and they're like, it makes sense. Do you guys oh, remember man. that Rise of Skywalker? Um, I think it was like Rent a Palpatine. Where he's like, let the battle begin in that trailer. Rent a Palpatine. Never, never said Rent. that. <laughs> oh, you oh. Well, yeah, like that happens with a lot of trailers that end up like they, they end up cutting a couple things for the final cut. No, it wasn't um, even Palpatine. It was like some dude with a really bad impersonation of him. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe time. it was just the dark side speaking. Possible. Well, I remember the didn't the poster have they used a picture of like a Palpatine figurine or something. I could have sworn it was like artwork taken from something that yeah. everyone recognized. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was. It was. Uh. Oh yeah, no, dude. It was from um, I think a sideshow statue or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he probably may have looked more Palpatine than Ian McDermott. You never know. At this point, yeah, man, I remember. I'm like, <laughs> I remember. Holy shit! I totally forgot about that. That's crazy. I um, I legit burst out laughing when he said, "I've died before." <laughs> that shit is so funny. And I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you can't again. stop me. <laughs> one more time. I mean, he's still alive and well, and Ray. That's what he said. How it works. So I don't know why we wouldn't. Yeah, that was him. really confusing to me. It's confusing to everybody, man. <laughs> Nobody knew what the fuck was supposed to be happening in that scene. Yeah, it was like if you strike me down, I shall live on in you. It's like, well, she did that. <laughs> he wins, basically. So he wins. So he I mean he's just gonna be like, no, no, ah, I win. It's yeah, like when I'm they wrote looking... that scene. You're like, did you watch the original trilogy? And they're like, huh? Like, you know, he's, the, he's like, strike me down, and then Luke doesn't, you know. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to the year 2030 when we get a Star Wars episode 10, uh, and we discover that there was actually another cloning facility, uh, and Palpatine's there now with, like, a new body, and that's how, like, they start the next set of Star Wars trilogies. And they just use AI Ian McDermott and Darth It's sort Maul. of become a metaphor for the state of Star Wars, isn't it? Like that production line of Palpatine clones, Star Destroyer, Death Stars, Darth Vader's <laughs> just yeah. all coming out. I'm like <laughs> ATSTs, ATSTs, yeah, pretty much. Will between uh, builds, all the I'm conveyor belts, all the little portals. I'm recreating a Dark Empire in all mm. like deep fake stuff. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it so cool. funny. Like for a long time. Um, when, you know, when Lucasfilm initially made that announcement in 2014 about, Hey guys, you know, we're basically everything that was expanding universe before that's going to go into legend status. And now everything we make from now on is going to be Canon. It's funny because like some of the excuses that came out around that time were, it's probably the best look at some of the worst storylines ever in the EU and always like the top one they used was dark empire. And they literally ripped it off and did a worse version of it for rise of skywalker like it, it, yeah. the memes make themselves i know it's strange it's like let's just make all of this non-existent but we're gonna pull from it it's like, all right what was the matt smith stuff gonna be for rise of skywalker that got scrapped i think allegedly he was supposed to be young palpatine hmm could have been were... or like there was theories about him playing the sun and uh, there was a bunch of shit out there but i have no idea what was really real because all the bullshit rumors that were coming around around that time. I mean, he could be the sun now. Did you uh, hear about the Acolyte rumor leak months Which, ago? What was it? About the village and the, the, the twin sisters or whatever. Um. Yes, I know that they're, they're supposed to be twins. Or like one raised by the Jedi and one that's not. 
Um, but do you know the reason she hates them? She hates the no. Jedi. Why? Um, supposedly, go. there's a village, and then there's like these marauders that come in every once in a while, and they they destroy the village or they they take from it. And so the Jedi come to the village because they notice a force sensitive child, and so they say, "Give us this child." And the village says, "We'll give you our child only if you protect protect us from the next raid." Raid comes, they don't show up. Um, everyone dies. Village burns, except for the sister of the four sensitive kid that they took. And so they're like, she's like, I fucking hate the Jedi. And then she gets in cahoots with some dark side guy and learns how to use the dark side and like vows to kill them. Hmm. Can't wait. Um, did we, did the trailer come out after we did last star grift? I think it had to have, right? We didn't talk about the It was like just after, I think like the following day or whatever. Right. On Tuesday came out. Yeah. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit! There's a lot of backlash to that thing. Dude, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I expected, I expected there to be backlash. I expected a lot of people not to like it. I didn't expect the overwhelming amount of dislikes. Like it, it, it passed half a million dislikes a few hours ago. No way. Let half a million that. dislikes to 177,000 no likes. No way, last dude. Checked. Yeah. Are you serious? Holy shit! Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's. That's not just a little, that's not like a split. That is, you know, 70%, 75% oh, wow. of people do not uh, like what they saw. Yeah, and I think it has a lot to do with not just the trail, but obviously all the conversations surrounding right? it and yeah, everything Leslie, Leslie Headland and the cast have said. Like, there's a lot yeah, of things yeah. that go into it, but I am shocked. I knew I was, I, I knew that I was in all likelihood not going to like what they're giving me with Acolyte, but I'm surprised by the mass, the mass backlash towards Lucasfilm over this. Yeah, people are, uh, there's too much, too much in a row of shit. <laughs> it's like uh, this. This trailer is not exactly promised. I think um, the coverage we had on on EFAB, I was saying that if this trailer had come out, let's say after Rogue One, I think most people would just been like, I don't know, yeah, I guess we'll give it a shot, see what happens. But it coming out now, like it's just like, uh, yeah, you have I mean, very low expectations. When I watched it, the likes were, I think it was like. A hundred or ninety thousand likes to like sixty or seventy thousand dislikes, and then <laughs> a week caught up half a million. That's crazy. Um, yeah, I want to know what everyone really didn't like about it. Uh, well, you can go by the mean, comments, <laughs> you'll get some yeah. interesting answers, I suppose. That's true. Well, no, basically, I mean... all the comments are like, close your eyes, yeah, yeah and yeah. then some joke. Yeah. Um, like, I can't. <laughs> yeah, the a- alien. I can't. That was- <laughs> alien, oh, there's, there's a new one. There's a new one. Uh, <laughs> Hooper drives the boat. Someone is killing Jedi. It's Disney. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's oh, it's fantastic. been the it's been pretty funny to watch. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think there's a couple things to criticize about the actual trailer. Besides all the outside stuff, if I hadn't heard anything about this, Star Wars comes out with a new thing, and uh, I watch a trailer. I have no fucking idea, like, even when this is. It could just as easily be set 500 years in the future. Like, I, th- there's nothing that I recognize in the trailer that connects it to 100 years before Phantom Menace. Um, unless you know about the High Republic and have, like, uh, and, and are, like, have recognized the attire and shit like that. But even that, High Republic, nobody fucking paid attention to High Republic. The first book sold like 100, 150,000 copies. Other than that, that's it. Nobody's engaged with High Republic. Nobody knows what's going on. And the the, the sales dropped off significantly after that by 90 or 95%. Did you read by that, the by the way? I read Light no. of the Jedi, the first one by Caven Scott, because I kind of wanted to see what it was about. It was uh, it was pretty dry and boring. But I think it, yeah. they, it, they also focus on way too many characters to kind of introduce you in, in that initial thing um and he didn't get too deep with many of the characters but i, I gave it a shot I, I didn't really like it very much um but that to me is like the main complaint of the trailer i don't think it really gives you very much context for what's going on for a normie fan perspective because what i was going to ask was does the book do that does the book give you a good base plate for like what you're getting in that show is it connected do they care about it like each other as entities I'm assuming not, because that's typically how Disney do it. Can, can you say that again? Sorry. 
So basically, does the book have any kind of like prep for you in terms of if you watch that or like, oh, if you read that, you'd be like, ah, oh, well, I, now I know what's going to happen in this show or I'm prepared. I understand. It's like I'm assuming they're relatively disconnected. Uh, Light of the Jedi takes place years, be- like several years before this. Let me see if I can find out when exactly it was. I want to say it was probably 200 or 150 years before the prequels. Um I, 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 find. I read uh, maybe a quarter of the book, <clears throat> and then I just put it down. Um, I said I was going to get back to it, but I never did. Yeah, so Light of the Jedi takes place about 130 years before this show. So 230 years BBY. Yeah. Um, they're introducing a new that character with the light whip in the movie or in the show. Uh, I, I guess a hundred years before I did the math wrong. A yeah, hundred years before, but um, yes, they are Vernesta Rowe or whatever. Right. Which have you seen the light whip depicted in any comic or anything from in from her from Vern, Vern whatever her fucking name is? No, I mean I've seen it in Legends, like Lumia and whoever else used it. So the way it's described is wild from the stuff I've been seeing, which light whips were a thing. We've seen that from Marvel com- Marvel Star Wars comics in like the 80s or something with Lumia and, and a couple other characters throughout the course of, you know, expanding universe. Yeah, Dark Horse it, it had tons of them. The, the difference is the, the light whip is like a, it's made of an actual like material, right? Um, but like a material that like you, you wrap it up and it's like you yeah. know, six feet coiled around, right? Yeah. It's like hanging on your belt I and mean, then you activate it. And obviously that kind of energy and it's got different little filaments and stuff that come out. It's like a spine. Da- yeah. yeah. Super dangerous yeah. weapon. What it sounds like this character's light, sa- like she just has a normal lightsaber that turns into a light whip, which makes no fucking sense. And also there's like no, a- there's no mass associated with that. It doesn't even fucking make sense how you would whip it. So there's like a, it's just a hilt and then it turns into a noodle? Yes, like it it goes from like a normal ass fucking lightsaber and then oh, she flips a switch and you know. And it goes limp. We, <laughs> have seen, we must have seen that before in something. Someone, I got something in my head. Chat, mm-hmm. help me out. What have we seen where it's like a whip style thing that turns into an actual stick type sword weapon? That's got to be in some sci-fi. I can see it in my head, but I was like, it's not Star Wars, I don't think. Yeah. Um, I mean, are you thinking of um, Wonder Woman? No, I don't think it's Wonder Woman. I'm going to keep an eye on uh, suggestions. I'm almost certain I've seen it from something. No, I'm not talking about parodies. <laughs> like Family Space, Guest. Spaceballs, yeah. <laughs> Spaceballs. <laughs> I mean, like an actual... <laughs> it's supposed to be, like, cool. Like, you have a big flippy flappy thing, and then you can press a button, it'll, like, <laughs> go erect. <laughs> are you talking about the Are you talking about the dark... Or are you talking about Batman? Like, Christian Bale's Batman? No, uh, but Bloodborne is actually close, kind of, to what I'm thinking about, but not... I'm thinking of something that glowed. I can't remember what sci-fi thing it was. Soul Calibur Ivy? Iron Man 2? No, because that's mainly whips, right? I don't think he makes them into, like, swords or anything. Pacific Rim. Ooh, was it Pacific Rim? That could be it. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I don't have any problem with them introducing a light whip or, or anything like that. The problem is if you... If you do it in this way, that makes no sense with how lightsabers work. Yeah. Um, instead of again, again, if you're gonna fucking take shit, you know that's been done before. Do it right, and uh, that that's kind of always my my issue. Because then we decide to nod or or make little changes. Hey, it's cool that they use it like a whip. Let's just make this lightsaber be a whip now. Mm-hmm. It really. Uh, un- undermines everything. I know exactly what you mean. It's like if you're gonna steal it, can you please steal the good idea, <laughs> not steal half of it? Yes. The Halo show is filled with that. They'll like a third of the way steal a thing, and so it's just completely fucked. That's finished now, by the way. I I had not seen a single moment from season two that wasn't just like a little clip or something on Twitter. Um, People are arguing over whether or not it was worse than the first season, which was dog shit. That's where it's at. It's like, was it dog shit? It's like, hmm, maybe. Might be better than that. But it also <laughs> might be worse than this. Like, hmm, I don't know. Whether or not it gets a season three is up in the air, but like it doesn't deserve one. I know that. I'm not like as as into Halo as a lot of people are, but friends of mine are. I'm watching them cry <laughs> like when watching this show. You you can't help but feel it's like ah. Pacific Room has a wild, like segmented sword. I think I that's what Pacific I was thinking Rome. of. That's with John Boyega, right? He's in the second one, yeah. 
No, I haven't seen it. Most people, I think, thought the second one was shit. First oh, you know one what was I saw one people liked. Over the weekend was uh, Immaculate. Hmm. What do you think? Shit. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, just, dude, just just because Sydney Sweeney was in it. No, my friend wanted to go see it, so I was like, "All right." I mean, fair yeah. enough. And then, of yeah. course, yeah. I mean, Sydney Sweeney. Was... I have I haven't heard great things about it. Doesn't look like it's doing super well at the box office. No, it was. I haven't seen you know, it. I thought I saw it would Ghostbusters. Be... Hmm. How was that? I don't like it. Um, I wasn't a big fan of Afterlife. Like, I thought it was okay. And I thought it was coming from a like a place of good intentions. Like I feel like they were trying to honor the things that came before, but I just didn't I didn't like a lot of the new characters and overall it was just very meh for me. This one, I wish I would have just stopped. I think they just need to stop making Ghostbusters movies. Don't there was Ryan. way there was way, everything. I, I know. Um there were way too many ironically, uh this uh week's episode of Bad Batch, I didn't mind. Um I didn't I didn't despise it as much as I expected to. But cross there's a line in there from Crosshair uh where he's like I'm not going to like this am I? And Omega's like you don't like anything. And he's like you're right I don't. I thought that was pretty funny. Um but no there were too many characters and there wasn't enough time spent on the ones that they already had uh Kamel Nujani or whatever his fucking name is the dude from Eternals. I hated his character. I don't know. I just I did not like frozen empire and it's probably going to end up uh capping around 200 million to 25 million at the box office and probably gonna lose money for him so that is a non-recommendation then huh i yeah i don't i don't recommend i haven't even seen afterlife and i am a huge fan of ghostbusters the original but i've always assumed that i ain't getting that ever again like that's just not happening it's it's i feel like the first ghostbusters is truly one of those lightning in a bottle type of movies where you could have tried you could try to recreate it a million times and it never quite hits right um and i just yeah. i'm just over it I, there's there's some big ghostbusters fans who really liked it i'm not a massive ghostbusters fan i would not recommend it so i don't know yeah, yeah i feel like they're taking a lot of old classic movies and making sequels now beetlejuice there's a new karate kid coming out uh what else are they doing they're just doing something else well, Karate well, Kid's I mean, definitely like, pay, you know, off the success of Cobra Kai, you know, and they're like, we got to capitalize yeah, on this. But but this one's different. I don't understand. It's Ralph Macchio and Jackie Chan. Mm -hmm. I, and I, and it takes place after Cobra Kai. I, I don't know. It, I guess it could be interesting. I just have no idea what it's about, really. Uh, it's, but the era of like trying to, you know, remake everything, that's that we're going back what? Like, where would you even pick? Because you could go back as far as 20. There's like an era switch where we went from them being kind of like, you know, like Terminator 3 to Terminator Genesis. Yeah. Whatever. Draw a line between those two. That's the era change. Shit. <laughs> well, when they were, Terminator 3 was shit. Like, like everyone thought it was shit because it was being compared to Terminator 2. But in yeah. retrospect, like people are like, well, Terminator 3 is pretty awesome compared to Genesis and Dark Fate. And it's like, yeah. Should probably like new, it. new era of bad. They used to, um, the sequels used to be, we want to try and recreate the one that everyone loved, and they usually do it badly, yeah. right? Like a sequelitis. Yeah. These days, yeah. they'll try and go for like, well, what if we did this, but deconstructed it? What if we did this, but subverted this? What if we did this, but it was a team of women instead of a team of men? Which I um, hate when they do that. And we don't know that, so, you know, is the Pirates of the Caribbean one even happening anymore? The women pirates? It's still supposedly in production. Oh, like, they're still moving forward with it, yeah. <laughs> All female, well, female focused Pirates of the Caribbean reboot. It was, uh, I was talking to my dad about this. And he, he, he had no idea what it was. I was like, so do you want to watch Ocean's <laughs> Eleven, but women, Ghostbusters, but women, or uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, but women? And he was like, why, why? <laughs> and I was just like, Can you gotta pick one. <laughs> women and men in it, and it'd be good? Yeah. Like, well, what was crazy is like, there are female characters in all of those movies. The original versions that like people really enjoy yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. but there's um, not enough of them i suppose what's funny though is you get the ghostbusters 2016 most people said chris hemsworth's character was like the only one they liked because he was like a dopey idiot who's trying his best sort of thing so he had like some level of endearment to him and then you think about bobby ken being like the most popular <laughs> it's like 
what is oh, happening yeah. <laughs> fucking john walker being like a surprise hero in falcon the winter soldier when they're like no you're supposed to dislike him you're like oh do better senator do better <laughs> <laughs> what about the new fallout show you know i've never played fallout i mean I, I played it for an hour at my buddy's house once in like 2012 or something that was it which which game do you know Oh geez, uh, there was a number to it. Fallout sixty four, fifty four. Fallout oh, seventy six. Fallout sixty four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd play that. It yeah, probably I didn't know better. what I was doing. I was just running around, kind of like a barren wasteland, um, figuring. That's how it out. goes. Yeah. Um, the they've shared some clips online, like with this, that, and the other part of the show, parts of trailers, and then things on their own. I've seen people are already pretty mad. I don't know that we should be expecting anything other than probably crap, but I'm more than willing to give it a shot. It might work out. Yeah, never know, right? There's some things that look, like in terms of the world and everything, there's certain things that I thought looked good, and it looks like it's probably pretty fucking expensive. Yeah. But then when it comes to any of the character interactions, I, I other than... Um, other than the ghoul, I, I don't find anybody that they showed us in those trailers interesting at all, especially not the main character, mm -hmm. which could be a problem. But... Is there anything yeah. you guys are excited for right now? Like, actually, it looks promising. House of, House the, of the Dragon, Dragon. Season, season 2. two. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's fucking go, baby. All right. I, listen, this might surprise your audience theory, but I'm actually Team Black. All right. Oh, that's interesting coming from a racist. So. I know, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what about you, Mahler? <laughs> See, I just think that he's saying that until he can get in their good graces and then stab them all in the back. That's what he's going to do. He's going to be like, yeah, I'm with you guys. Yeah. And then... Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm known for pandering to black people. That's me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's blacks versus greens. So if you don't know, it's uh, the the origin of the blacks versus the greens based off like dress colors for the, these two women. But anyway, um you have the Greens, so Aegon and Alicent and Otto and the people who are in power at King's Landing. And then you have Queen Rhaenyra and the Blacks, who are all the people who are kind of trying to usurp and take back her throne. Uh, and the marketing, I, I, loved, I loved how they're like leaning into it with the marketing yeah, and cool. really telling everybody that, hey, we put it, we set up all the pieces in the first season. Now it's time to fucking choose a side because we're going to war. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I'm quite fond of... I think my three favorite characters are Otto, Eamon, and Damon. So I'm a little bit split because, I, 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 but I don't know what's going to happen for everybody. So right now I'm like, I'm like happy to just see how it rolls out. But in terms of like who's more evil, maybe, and that I could pick it that way. It's like stacking up some ill deeds on both sides. It's hard to say who the most evil is, but I imagine after a few episodes, it's going to keep going back and forth. Like wait, till you, wait till you see episode one. Yeah, I figure. <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't know if I if I was to rewatch season season one right now, I might be able to give you an answer. But I kind of I'm I'm just really up for watching it happen, you know. Mm. Even the way Ryan says "black," racist. Mm -hmm. I just pronounce I pronounce my words black. Yeah, um, Shogun as well. That's coming out and it's top notch. <laughs> um, we had gentlemen just drop out. We would be saying it would be exciting to follow it if they released it properly, which would be one per week. But they fucked that up. Seriously, like the gentleman, it's so hard to build up word of mouth when it's out already. All of it's done. It's like it's come and gone almost. If that was weekly, it would have been way better. Yeah, the the weekly release of again, if if you don't have a good show, it's not going to matter, right? If you don't have a good show, if you release it weekly, that's not going to make it a successful show. But if you have a good show, I feel like if it's out for eight weeks and people talk about it the first two weeks and like, holy shit, that's actually pretty fucking good. And you get yeah. more people on board, more people on board, and you're all experiencing it together. By the time that final episode comes out, like you can really grow your audience. And I think that we saw that with House of the Dragon. Absolutely. I, yeah. I was skeptical of shit. That, dude. You definitely they, do. You know, you know, like levels of hype, if you get to plus 100 and then all the way down to negative 100, I was at like negative probably like 80, 70 for House of the Dragon. By the time the last episode came out, I was, I was happily at 80 at least. I was all the way on the other side. And I remember, like, the first thing everyone wants to talk about is, do you remember that shot with uh, Vega being above the dragon in the shadows and stuff? It's like, fucking hell. If that season had dropped day one all at once, I might have watched it. But, but like, we wouldn't have had all those conversations, all those promotions of the show. 
yeah. all those streams, all those discussions, breakdowns, predictions. And it's just like, yeah, you miss out on all of it. And I don't know why they've not. Because do you know that Arcane season one, it came out in threes. Why else would they do that other than recognizing the benefit of allowing it to stir? They all get, like you know? Netflix has been bending on that the past couple of years. Remember uh, Stranger Things, which I still haven't watched, by the way, but Stranger Things season uh, four. Yeah, I've never seen a single episode of Stranger Things. I mean, uh, it's kind of worth seeing season one and four. Enjoyable. <laughs> Mostly one. Yeah, yeah. That, a lot of people recommend it, so I'll, I'll get around to it. Maybe when it's all out, by the time Millie Bobby Brown's thirty-five years old and finally <laughs> season five out. But, um, but that they split into two two parts. Yeah. Uh, the Witcher they started doing parts. Like yeah. they they understand that they are, even though they're still the top dog by far, that they do need to adapt a little bit when it comes to that release model. I, I genuinely it's only been bad for the gentleman because it's actually hard to keep mentioning it because it's just like the thing that's it's just long gone already it feels like um and then you like build hype for the next season which won't be for ages you know arcane season two will be the end of this year so that'll have its cycle especially if they do three 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 that'll work out pretty well um what else is arcane. there Arcane is the CGI, the right? League of Legends animated show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my yeah, okay. My team was like, yeah, the Vader fan film is gonna look somewhat like that. I was like, cool. Mm -hmm. and that's the only time I heard about Arcane. I adore the animation in that show, so that'll be cool. Well, we were sorry, we were thinking of doing it like. Oh, that. thinking of going that direction, we went a different one. Yeah, and then yeah, we yeah. went in. We went into the more uh, realistic uh, old republic, but I really liked that style. But it's also very, very expensive. <laughs> oh yeah. Let me, let, me, uh, let me bring this up. And yeah, someone who said that this is a clickbait title. No, this is actually, uh, this is our last episode so, uh, until, you know, shows are done and then we'll... But that being said, I have one final proposition for you guys that I won't say publicly. We can talk about it after. Which you'll probably say no, but... <laughs> one final proposition. One final proposition. Mm. It's the, the last of my cards. Lost my cards. Last of your cards. Um, Do you happen to rewatch the prequels by any chance, either of you? <laughs> no, I, I haven't had any free moments. I don't need to though. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I oh, did. Look, I did yeah. too. Did you? Yeah. I I I did not get all the way through the Obi Wan Anakin fight, but yeah. That's fine. Really? That's the one that you, you like, tapped out on? I, I just, I ran out of time. I was watching it today. Could be oh. watching it literally on mute right now to finish up and look at you. Then I wouldn't get the, fan. then I wouldn't get it though. Like I, the one thing that I was uh, going to say specifically about Revenge of the Sith was when it comes to like the soundtrack and the, the moodiness and the broodiness of it, and the, the, the little moments of darkness that come out like throughout the entire score. I fucking that might be like my favorite fucking soundtrack might be Revenge of the Sith of all time of Star Wars it probably of all time I actually. usually end up saying Revenge of the Sith is the best of the six I'm not yeah, even including the sequels because I'm not insane the, the, no the best soundtrack out of the six you mean the whole movie or like yeah, yeah. one in particular no I love I love the entire thing I think it's fantastic the, you know, the, what's cool about it is how many different songs there are different styles that they yeah. approach obviously everything to do with like well, everything. There's no point in specifying necessarily unless you want to. <laughs> you know what I always found really cool about that, about the Revenge of the Sith, is that every scene with Anakin, or almost every scene, one half of his face is covered in shadows. Mm -hmm. Every yeah, scene that's shot. Pretty much. Um, yeah. I also noticed that, that the it feels like there was a big focus on lighting like that for revenge of the sith yeah which purpose. isn't necessarily the same way in uh attack of the clones um nope. but th that that's definitely something i noticed was there was a focus on and when you're doing these all fucking digital sets like they are like that is a very conscious lighting decision for them to make and i don't know exactly if it was a struggle for filming at all like that but uh it definitely get the message across they're trying to send with it tell you what was a struggle for filming c3po that reflective son of a oh. gun was the most <laughs> difficult thing to film for George. Hmm. Because you can see like the camera in him or? Because you can see the green screen, you can see the blue screen, you can see the mm. camera, you can ah. see everything. So it's like, imagine taking out the blue screen, but it's like part of 3PO because he's reflective. 
Well, that'd be annoying. Yeah, be very difficult. That's why droids that are not shiny are much easier. Even lightsaber hilts, like Anakin's lightsaber hilt. So we were shooting for the for my site. Uh, very, very, very shiny hilt. And it was like impossible because it's just so difficult to not get the reflections of everything. Well, what did you, uh, Mahler, since you recently rewatched them, was there anything you, uh, anything you got from it? Phantom Menace, Tech of Clones, anything that you maybe didn't notice um, before that you appreciated it about I it? I tell you what, every time I rewatch them, my rankings change for Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. This time around, I thought Phantom Menace was better. Um, when I oftentimes tell with Attack of the Clones, and I think it's because of the fact that it's fucking Clone Wars. It's like, yeah, but uh, Phantom Menace, it's hard for me not to love that one because of Darth Maul anyway, but you know, I, just, uh, I was watching and I was I think I was uh, more happy this time around with Qui-Gon than I ever have been. I enjoy... I think I always did enjoy him, right? And then I had a lot of discussions over the internet of people saying, like, he's stoic as an excuse for his, like, lack of characterization and acting, which is, like, a thing that spread primarily probably from Red Letter Media. But at the same time, you watch it, and it's like, oh, man, all I could think of is I would have liked a lot more of him. It's just one of the most interesting yeah. characters in the Star Wars universe, and seeing how he acts, he's a, um, yeah. where he decides to use the Force, you know, stuff like that. He, he gives a great performance. Like, I, I really I, enjoy him. I think Liam Neeson's really fucking good in it, especially surrounded by. Obviously, he had to carry a lot of it um, when he's surrounded by a young uh, Natalie Portman, a young Jake Lloyd, fucking Jar Jar Binks. Like a, a lot of it is focused <laughs> yeah. on him. <laughs> Well, he and Jar Jar are carrying it, is what you mean. Obviously, that's what I mean. That's right. Yeah. Um, Anything I, you uh, were thinking of this time around? For me, I I always go to the final battle scene in Phantom Menace. And although it is obviously offset by some of the goofiness of the Gungan versus battle droid battle, I really liked... The, the pacing all throughout that final, you know, 20 minute battle scene where you're going boom to boom to boom to boom to boom. And all of the low points hit at the same time. And then you get the hot, well, high points if it's actually high, not exactly high when Qui-Gon's dying in Obi-Wan's arms. Yeah. But I really appreciate that final, final battle sequence. And it, it brings me right back to when I was a kid watching that shit and how it blew me away. Um, There's little things that I think a lot of people look over and that is like for example just how resolute Qui-Gon is fighting Maul there's just no fear at all he's like yeah I got this I'm gonna go after you even though yeah. he's a fucking tough guy to beat yeah and he's old Qui-Gon's old as shit like yeah. 50 something or even 60 he, he's definitely past his prime at that point uh, to the point where because I think Qui-Gon isn't Qui-Gon supposed to be an Ataru specialist um, which Obviously, it kind of when you get to that age, you're not going to be able to do some of the same. Well, unless you're fucking Yoda, he can still flip around, do whatever the fuck he wants. But for most, for humans, <laughs> uh, you know, you're not going to be able to do to fight in, in kind of the same manner that you've always fought your entire life. But yeah, it's it's a perfect description of what you know. Qui Gon's calm, centered, trusting in the Force, and Darth Maul is just sitting there prowling like a fucking animal. He just taken. Yeah, he's just unleashing all of that angst from those years of being pent up. Well, the, I assume you guys thing... would uh, feel that Obi-Wan maybe came close to uh, getting a bit of dark side in him in that fight at the end. 100%. I think he came close, but I think he was just more uh, focused. But I think he came pretty damn close. That was probably the closest he's ever come. He, he 100%, you know, tapped into his emotions. You can yeah. see it in his eyes. You can see it in the way that he fights. To me, still, when he rushes in there and like wraps yeah. around, and that first back and forth they have when when Maul goes, ch -ch -ch, yeah. uh, and and Obi Wan's doing the block, boom, like, boom, boom. That's boom. one of my that, favorite sequences. I was about to say that might be my favorite individual piece of choreography yeah. in all of Star Wars. Yeah, it's so bad. Dude. Yeah, I used to do that when I was fucking. I was at my job when I was like early in high school, and uh, like when I had to fucking sweep or mop or whatever you end up with a fucking broom handle and be fucking pretend, <laughs> pretend <laughs> i was fucking fighting pretend i was obi-wan kenobi with a mop handle um but yeah but then obviously we see that for for all the gains he makes he, he fucking loses yeah here it yeah. is 
John yeah, Williams you, about to fuck your asshole. I was gonna say, be careful. <laughs> yeah, bounce. He's ready. Boom. Yeah. And, and I was gonna say, obviously, we're about to see him fucking get his ass beat here. Yeah, he still and, loses. Yeah, exactly. He's tapped into all of this, and he ends up fucking losing. Yeah, it's because he it's was not... too focused on his anger right there. Right? Exactly. He, they're right there. He's like, yeah, I'm going to kill you. Oh, shit. And Maul's like, bro, I am the darkness. This is nothing new for me. But literally, he fucking... It's exactly what happened to fucking Qui-Gon in terms of like that move. and you know, He could have just fucking ran him through right there. You know what I mean? Like He could have done that to Obi-Wan right there. But instead, you he force pushes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go to right when uh, Obi Wan gets back. Imagine if Maul follows up with one hit to the head, with one fucking pommel to the head. What do you mean, force pushes him and then? No, no, no. So like when he right here pu when he Just... pushes him back off the lock, if he's if he follows up with a pommel strike to the face, he, he's basically stunned and he could have ran him. It is an open in, yeah, I assume. But oh. the force push is faster, I guess, than the. Uh... Stabbing. So essentially, but... kind of like what what Obi Wan did right uh, here. Boom! He could have just done that to him. Why didn't he it's just an step over right? him? Why didn't he just step over him and stab him right there? Because he wanted to do a sick flip. <laughs> uh, he, tr he tried, I guess. Yeah. Do you guys buy the whole um this experience with Maul? Uh, how he beats him is what gives him like prep and expectations on the whole the shit with Anakin and him and their sort of their end when, of their duel. What what's this? So like the idea that uh him coming over Darth Maul and then slicing him gives him a sense of like knowing what to expect when Anakin comes over him. Yeah. Like yeah, that so was I assume that was deliberate. Yeah, it was in the comic. Well I don't know what deliberate for George, but it was deliberate for uh, in, in the comics once Disney came in. I remember seeing something where Anakin was training with a droid that he made look like Darth Maul, and then Obi Wan and Mace Windu and Palpatine were all watching him from the from the balcony above, and uh, Obi Wan's like he's been obsessed with hearing about my stories of the Zabrak, and Anakin just like kept training with this droid and trying to beat him. So that he could basically, he, he's been going toe to toe with Obi Wan since he was a kid, just kind of like prove that he's better. Dude, I wish I'll see you in <laughs> ten years. <laughs> the the then... expression Mole has when he's been defeated is such a like what, fuck, damn. And I just I like he, he's like, are you serious? Like, what? Yeah, <laughs> I forgot about Ow. that lightsaber. <laughs> you. Bitch. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the sickest fights, dude. Seriously is. If only, if only Obi-Wan, or if only Darth Maul had been Reva, he would have survived. Yeah. Or oh, sorry, God. if only Qui-Gon had been Reva, he would have survived. Oh, that too. <laughs> like, they would have been in the movie still, yeah. Yeah, it's quite unfortunate. And this is in Rebels. I've seen this. That's that. Goodbye, well, my lover. Goodbye, what are generally my the, friend. the takes on that from like fans? Because I liked it from what I saw, but I don't know if there's like criticism or praise of it that I haven't heard. It's criticism on everything. Uh, yeah, but still, I find it interested, right? Like, uh, what do you guys think of I, it? I, I think most Rebels fans really like it. I I get the messaging behind it. Yeah. I just um, too slow, uh, too too quick. It, but I guess that's the point. Well, it's it what is they're going for, right? Hundred yeah. percent. That's a hundred percent the point. Um, as somebody who thinks that this should have been the end of Darth Maul, I don't really feel like it's like, oh, what a great conclusion to Maul and Obi Wan's. No, fuck that. It was over right there. Like t to me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I get that. Yeah. Um, I, I think most Rebels fans really enjoy that. Um, in terms of if you presented it to the general Star Wars audience, I have no idea. It'd probably be as confused as they were when he popped up at the end of Solo. Well, so how does it work with continuity? It's like that's a flash forward, I guess, in Rebels. That no, that is taking place, um, like in Rebel. That timeline of Rebels probably a couple years before a, a new, new hope. hope. Yeah. Okay. Right. I think that uh, final I season Rebels was... takes place just a few years before a New Hope. I thought it was like right before. Yeah, yeah. It not there's not that much time. Um. When does final? Because you hear, because you hear, 
Aunt Beru say the same thing she does in episode four, but I mean, she's like, Luke, Luke, good calling out for him, but uh, it's hmm. it's one year before A New Hope. Yeah, yeah. one year before. Mola basing his opinions off others. I just want to know what they think. <laughs> Why? How dare you base your opinions off others? Especially because I've got such little context, right? You guys would have thought about it for much longer than I have. Yeah, so Sam came on. We did Rule of uh, Two with Mark, and he came to Collider, and he explained how that scene uh, was done. And uh, it was like Maul... Obi-Wan was essentially taking different forms of his life in that moment, where he was like, he was like, you know, I'm Kenobi of the Clone Wars. No, wait, I'm not. I'm a Jedi or something like this. And he puts it forwards. And then he's like, no, wait, I'm Qui-Gon. And then he goes like in the Qui-Gon stance. Hmm. So he takes different forms for it. And it was pretty poetic. Yeah, I like stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> so lot of friends. Yeah. You know, one of the other ones I like is uh, the interpretation of like the, oh, the metaphor in Yoda and Palpatine's battle of him throwing literal like star systems at him as in controlling the galaxy not like in the actual literal sense but more so in the in the way or that he like controls a senator the senator who represents a, a system or whatever and it's yeah, like his them at him yeah corruption is complete to the point of he can just manipulate whole systems to his advantage against Yoda like that's kind of cool and Yoda spinning one and throwing it back that was obviously Alderaan nobody cares about that it's going to explode anyway <laughs> <laughs> I never heard of that. <laughs> no, cool. I, I still think realize. Attack of the Clones is the most memeable uh, of all the movies. Like Probably. even little things, like when Obi Wan goes in to talk to Dex and like sit down, blah blah blah, blah and like he literally sits down for half a second before he's even covered and like bounces back up. It's just like little silly things in that movie. I thought Revenge of the Sith was the most memeable and most tragic at the same time because there's so many memes in Revenge of the Sith. There are a lot. Do you... Prequels in general. Yeah, yeah. Only money. Are you an angel? Now this is pod racing. <laughs> I'll try spinning. That's a good trick. That's a good trick. Yeah, we'll see. There's a couple just like random... There's a couple like random exclamations from Anakin and Phantom Menace that randomly bother me this yippee. time around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yippee. Or like even when when he's like getting the getting the pod racer ready and Qui-Gon fucking picks him up and like puts him in there, he just goes like, Whoa. <laughs> and it's like, what are you freaking out about? Um <laughs> Did he? Yeah, he goes, whoa! It's like, I gotta put some in there. It's like, you're literally about to go like a fucking million miles an hour. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, all the, like, the G-force that's on your body, the all that shit, but, like, that's what, that gets a whoa out of you. I don't know. It's probably because it's, like, it's the first time he has, like, a father figure do it, you know? It's the first time a man's touched me. Thanks, Qui-Gon. Whoa. Whoa. All right. Maybe I think Phantom right. Menace could really have done with more Darth Maul scenes, okay? We didn't have enough. We need a few more hours, I would say. Just pop them in. Well, uh, uh, so Nick Dillard happen. actually shot... A... Was it half an hour or four hours? I think it was four hours of the fight <laughs> that never was put in. Like, there was a shit ton more footage. There was some crazy stuff. I wasn't stuff even just talking about the fight. I mean, like, we get, like, one scene that's pretty quick for Darth Maul's character. Would have loved a bit more, you know? Because he's like, we're gonna take revenge after all these years. And you're like, oh yeah, fair enough, I get you. But you know, hearing him, I don't know exactly what context I would use, but I would definitely want to. You know, if only we reduced maybe some jaw jaw time. I know, I know that sounds a bit crazy, but I'm just saying <laughs> possibility. What? Really? You, guys you cut jaw jaw. Go ahead. Have the most negative impact on the galaxy, the elitist, clone-minded ways of the Jedi, or the tyrannical nature of the Sith. Uh, I probably the Jedi, to be honest. I, I would say I mean, probably the Sith because probably the Sith, right? <laughs> yeah, because they, it it's like peace and prosperity, like all these things, and the only at, at that point, like the negative machinations in the galaxy are literally being driven by the Sith themselves. Like they're the ones that are behind all this conflict and shit. So I I would probably say Sith, not to say the Jedi are perfect or anything. I just, the more, the older I grow, the more I find the Jedi are just so brainwashed by politics. I'm just like, these uh, guys are 
but they're definitely lame and gay. They don't even let you fuck. I mean, that sucks, obviously. <laughs> but just... well, yeah, and they insert themselves everywhere, right? They they're think palms. that they know best. Yeah. I get that, but that's it's still. So I feel like that's still better than the Sith. Yeah, I mean, they're both shitty. <laughs> I mean, I would definitely be a Sith, but just saying, I would be a Sith <laughs> for my for myself, not for the betterment of the galaxy. Mm-hmm. I would be a Sith, yeah. I'd be, I'd be a in between. I'd be a. I just got Force powers and I'm strong as hell. But, um, that's it. Sad to see the show go. Also, do you guys? All right. What's up, Mister Penguin? <laughs> you guys need to do the podcast when the Phantom Menace 25th anniversary re-release comes out in theaters. Oh, on May 4th. Yeah, so that we could do a uh, so we could do a reaction to the special footage of the acolyte that they're going to show at all Phantom Menace oh. show-ins. Oh right, yeah. Just to remind you, it's a prequel to the prequels. Right, just to remind you, it's connected. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> sad to see, <laughs> sad to see this show end. Loved all the different views on Star Wars content. That was really yeah. funny. It's a theory. Uh, <laughs> Great Jedi, Serena. <laughs> Uh, cheers to the final episode of Star Grift. Ryan Mahler, I love you guys' dynamic. And are the two who have the best zingers on FNT that always get overlooked? Love all three of you guys. Can't wait for your Acolyte review. We do try and help each other out sometimes when we're the only ones that notice each other's jokes and everyone else is laughing. It's like, ah, that one's going to waste. You missed it. That's true. Chad's gone on a rant about AI or some shit. Yeah, and it's like, he just said bat cheese. And nobody's, nobody's noticed. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> to bat cheese yeah it's fucking and killed me my kids bad. are really into batman right now and he comes up and asks for everything bat you know a bat phone he asks for bat cheese and i give it to him it's like, <laughs> oh, <you're laughs> bat cheese <laughs> Every, everyone like happened. didn't care because i was just losing it like it's so, it's asking for bat cheese it's so outrageous <laughs> can we expect a star grift episode to come back for the acolyte yeah yeah at the end yeah yeah, I mean, if something is super controversial, I'm, I think we could probably get the boys together if we all. Uh... Yeah, with a little bit of notice, right? Like if, yeah. if say, for example, Star Wars gets sold to fucking Apple, he'd be like, yeah, we could do an episode. Hmm. So Acolyte looks like garbage. Huh? A little bit. I was pumped to see the Phantom Menace 25th anniversary return to theaters until I found out they were sticking the Acolyte trailer in front of it. I guess I could skip all the previews and then take my seat. I think it comes at the end. From what I heard, I think it comes at the end, but I, I've just heard people talk about it. I'd never actually saw like a press release or an article or anything. But yeah. First ever Super Chat, long overdue. Thanks, Andrew. Love you all, but specifically, I have been following Mahler since his The Last Should I Rage video years ago, and he has since been my go-to listen with the EFAP crew. Appreciate all of you guys. Much love. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah. In honor of the last regular Star Grift and our fallen trooper Nemec Ryan, can you please read Nemec's manifesto in Omega's voice, please, and thank you. I don't know what that is. Well, does, does, is, is Ryan willing? I, 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 don't, I wouldn't blame him if he wouldn't want to. I mean... I'm like... Nem our fallen trooper Nemec. Nemec's manifesto... I don't even I don't know if I'm familiar with that. It's Andor, right? Yeah, but like you want me to read the entire fucking thing? It's quite long. <laughs> yeah, it's just, like I just, I don't just know do it from memory. Sentences. Just do a few sentences. All right. Um, let's see. Let me search Nemix manifesto. You can keep reading. Speaking of raid. I'm watching Federal Agents Raid P. Diddy's house live right now on the news. Hmm. Oh, really? Your favorite French guy here. What's up, Pierre Gossin? One last time for the grifters. These Monday streams were... Those Monday streams... Those Mondays were awesome. Cheers to the three of you, and we'll follow your careers with great interest. May the force be with you all. Love. Well, thank you. Thank you, Pierre. Anyone... Of y'all interested in getting the Job of the Hut popcorn bucket? Usually pick up a few of them, right? One to Holds use, one to keep. Butter. There is there is a Job of the Hut popcorn bucket they're releasing at like Disneyland or or no, maybe they're giving them away at the Phantom Menace things. I don't fucking know. But oh, this is real. Yeah, it, it's like his head fucking pops open. 
So hmm. you can use it. Interesting. The Jedi Vernestra Rowe has a purple lightsaber that can turn into a whip, a light whip in the Acolyte via Culture Crave four days ago. Mm-hmm. We've talked about it a little bit. Mm. What are each of your top three duels in Star Wars? I mean, well, hey, easy. Episode one, Phantom Menace with Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and Maul, and then probably Yoda and Dooku, and then... Uh... Anakin Obi-Wan? Yeah, for, for me, I'd put Anakin Obi-Wan first. Like, that's my that's my favorite one, I think, just because of, like, the, like, the emotions behind it and everything. My second favorite would probably be Duel of the Fates. And, um, I, like, I like, I like Yoda Dooku, but I like the whole sequence. I like seeing Dooku thrash Obi-Wan and, and handle Anakin. And then see Yoda come in. So yeah, I guess yeah, they're the same is, top three, just a different order. This is a little tough because the the two meters that go by are uh, the choreography and then the emotional weight, and it can like really change my answers. But Luke Skywalker resist. and Vader is like yeah. the throne room fight is not even like mind blowing choreography wise, but it's just everything that's happening for those characters in that room makes me so invested in that fight every time I watch it. And then I absolutely adore the Bespin fight. Um, all kinds of the, the choreography and the, the the how much of Vader is like a hunter in that scene and has pretty much full control until he realizes he better be careful, you know, like when Luke gets the hit on him and then he takes his hand off. I always love that as a dynamic because the movie uses, right, is one that he uses earlier, gives him an opening to take Luke's hand if he wanted, but he doesn't at that point. He's like, uh, I'm playing with you, I've got you. But then later on, he's like, okay, you're losing your fucking hand, you just hit me. Like, <laughs> enough of this shit. Like, I love that aspect. But I wouldn't, I'd be lying if I said, you know, Duel of Fates, Anakin and Obi-Wan, and Dooku versus Anakin and Obi-Wan. I, uh, mm -hmm. I really like all of those fights as well. So it's, it's really hard to rank them. But I think my number one and number two would both be Luke and Vader. And then three is like a tie between a lot of the prequel ones. There would be no sequel battles present in this fucking ranking ever. Mauler has a bigger bazooka than Josh. Hmm. Star Wars: The Last Grift. It's been good times, boys. <laughs> glad you, glad you're keeping uh, yourself from overextending. Long man, best of luck to all three of you. Thank you, thank you, Aki Facky. So the traders leave. Want to have a German wingman? We inspired the Empire. Pretty cool. That's not very funny. Yeah. Just finished heir to the Empire trilogy. trilogy. Wow, love the series. Any book re recommendations to continue the story of Luke, Han, Leia, and her two new kids, Jason and Jaina? Thanks for getting me hooked into EU. Gonna miss this trio. Yeah, me too. Awesome. Uh, that's cool, Michael. Um, what I would read after that would maybe be the uh, I'd get in the Jedi Academy trilogy. Maybe um, if you really like the kids and want to see like their um, like how they end up getting trained, the Young Jedi Knights series that's fucking awesome as well i'd read that after jedi academy that has a lot of jason and jaina obviously it's geared towards the younger audience but jason and jaina so love. <laughs> the acolyte writer's room is solid with writers from house of dragon hbo watchman mr robot and more why did ryan make a vid saying it's going to be bad ha well have you listened to anyone talk about the acolyte and how first and foremost it's all about diversity and identity politics one of those writers has never seen star wars Yet Leslie Headland was bragging about hiring that person. Yeah. So uh, all I have to do is open my ears and listen to what these people are telling me. They're not even hiding what they're going to do. Every single one of the cast has come out. They haven't talked about fucking how much they love Star Wars. All they've talked about is how happy we bring diversity to fucking Star Wars. Jodie Turner-Smith. Finally, we get a woman in Star Wars. Yes, we've had too many men in Star Wars. It's a very patriarchal story. That's how she spoke at Star yeah. Wars fucking celebration. And there's a reason all those goddamn morons that went up there to talk about their fucking show. There's a reason that every single one of their interviews got ratioed. It's because people are seeing right through this bullshit and they don't fucking want it. That's why that trailer's ratioed. So apparently I'm, I'm not the only one that thinks it's going to be fucking horse shit. Well, there's an answer. Yeah. Hey, Mahler, last week you brought up Soma and its themes on what it means to be human. Might I suggest the Talos Principle? 
a physics-based puzzle game with similar themes on humanity and philosophy. I've had that suggested to me a couple times, thanks to my Somer interest. I have it, and I should get around to it at some point. Just got a whole list of shows, movies, and games to get to someday. But thank you for the recommendation. Thanks, Sean. I want to see Geode fight. Oh, that'd be wild. Geode fights the thing. Michael Batty with Half says, Love you, lads, and your delightfully diverse dynamic. Some name changes for your consideration. Star Grift Monthly. Bombard Grift mon by Monthly. <laughs> that would be great. Pharaoh grace us with his return one last time. Mm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Sad this is ending. I like all three of you. I do have a question for Mahler. Did you have to take down your Loki Season 1 EFAP reactions? No, they were, they never existed. We we did season one coverage in the form of like an episode. The season two ones were the only time we did like direct reactions and stuff. Uh, people ask the same thing about Mandalorian. We never did season one, but we did season two and three. It's, uh, whatever you, I don't think anything currently that's been released for EFAP has been taken down or at least uh, on my end or YouTube's end right now. I think everything's still up. So anything you find or rather can't find doesn't exist. At least I think so anyway. <laughs> Stargrift special regardless. I'm excited to imbibe, imbibe whatever mm -hmm. content you boys invent going forwards, especially the Acolyte Review. Sweet. All good things can come to an end. Started watching the Clone Wars after being frustrated with live action Ahsoka. I'm understanding why even fans don't care for season one. Of course, yes, you can understand easily. You got to start with the movie, though. If you didn't start with the movie, that's a big mistake. If people think the acolyte ratio is bad, think about what the Ray movie is going to be. Ooh. Acolyte current ratio likes 177 to 520. Yep. Yeah, that Ray uh, movie, I, I anticipate 750k dislikes. Well, this when, one's not like... done yet. Let's not undersell this <laughs> one. This one's got a long way to go. Yeah, do you mean like in the first week for the Ray movie trailer or first day? Week. Yeah, 500 to 750k. Because it's ultimately what destroyed the sequels. You know, now they're trying to continue that story. And it's like, it has nothing to do with Ray. It's just you you guys, are you, you're taking something that destroyed six films before it. And you're now trying to stretch it and continue it. It's like, what do you, what do you expect is going to be the feedback? Yeah. And it also yeah. has the, the added, again, the same thing Acolyte has is the added narrative about the person who's in charge of this, Charmino Bade Chinoy, and certain things she said. So that's going to get a lot of attention. Yeah, they're really? almost, um, I think this came up on an open bar, but they're almost in a worse position than if they would be with a blank IP. Like if the Acolyte were a new IP, it would have yeah. a hell of a lot less dislikes. Yes, because I don't think that the trailer was like horrifically bad or anything. Um, I think the trailer was a little uninspired. Um, and lacked a lot of specifics. It's everything surrounding everything they've told us about this series that is really making people skeptical. Yeah. Bring back Rule of Three. Whatever happened to that? Rule of Three. Oh, with the boys? Yeah, I'd have to ask them if they're available. Uh, I asked them to have a separate show, but uh, they were quite busy. Mahler just came across the EFAP highlight of the most embarrassing The Rise of Skywalker trailer reaction. It is probably the funniest thing I will see all year. Yeah, the highlights channel is moving through like all the classic stuff. Make sure to leave a comment on those videos. The uh, wolf is running it, so you'll know what you want to see. Sort of, It's just a collection of easier to find moments as opposed to scrolling through like 10 hour podcasts and stuff. Mm -hmm. But also keep watching the main podcast too. <laughs> like, that's also cool. I'm also okay with that. The Zygerian slavers use a light whip in Clone Wars. Zygerian slavers use a light whip in Clone Wars. Um, Zygerian slavers. I don't know if I remember the arc. Oh. What season? The little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This thing. Oh yeah. There you go. Yeah, you're right. That, that, that is how they work. They just fucking open up randomly. Can you go to the? Ah. Can you go back? Um, to when it ignited, <laughs> that fucking freeze. I want, I want to see it like if it actually like ignites from a hilt. Yeah, here, yeah, it's. Yeah. God, it's so <laughs> retarded, dude. And it's full on just spews out. There would be no fucking mass, basically. 
there would be no fucking mass with that to actually have it whip, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, because it's light. <laughs> yes. Which isn't like inherently what what makes lightsaber such an interesting weapon because so little mass other than like directly around the hilt, um, which is why it's difficult for anyone that's not a Jedi to be able to control. Have any of you played Hogwarts Legacy? If so, what'd you think? Slytherin Forever. It's a fun game. Got a little bit boring. I missed that one. Yeah. I liked it. I liked Hogwarts Legacy. Y'all look up Bible Man. He had a lightsaber, wore superhero attire, and fought the armies of Satan. Now I have no idea who makes who the, how the makers weren't sued. <laughs> Ghostbusters felt like Nickelodeon show for kids. Bad Batch, X Men, Walking Dead, Shogun, Invincible airing right now. What? Yeah, I think oh, Invincible man. is back, right? As far as I know, yeah. Oh, I haven't yeah. seen it. Theory. Now we are free. I will see you again, but not yet. Not yet. Soon. In Elysium. Theory, your palpy impression is unparalleled. Send the grift off in style with a quote of your voice for old time's sake. Preferably something funny like, Mui Mui Yusa Boys. Mui Mui Yusa Boys Bombad. Love you guys. Beautiful. Or is that supposed to be in Palpatine? I think so. Palpatine, yeah. Mui Mui Yusa Boys Bombad. <laughs> it feels right. It feels right. In-game Grift lore villains, Leslie Headland, Dave Filoni, K.K. Iger, Hidalgo. Man, we should make a game. So many lightsabers, I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> How do y'all feel about George saying making magic isn't for amateurs? And for... I, You know, I've had this video done for literally the day he said it. I just haven't uploaded it because it's just it's it's a tough one to upload, but I'll probably upload it for tomorrow. I... um. The only issue I take with his entire statement, his entire position, is the making magic is not for amateurs. Because that was an amateur. He was an amateur dude. filmmaker, basically. Like the hell, th dude. that's the most most like for the guy who is so fed up with the industry and the corporatization of it and how in the Hollywood regime. Yeah, it was... that just seems so antithetical to everything he built his entire career on, and it <sighs> I don't like that statement. Nope. But everything else, in terms of, there was a lot of people going really hard on George Lucas for making that statement about Bob Iger, which, say what you want, whatever. Disney stock was about $50 per share when he made that deal. I mean, he's over doubled his money off the deal that Bob Iger gave him. So it's not surprising that he would just have his back, even after all the bullshit that's happened. I'll miss your show, guys. You have to stick together. Omega Voice. Can you all talk about the state <laughs> of storytelling in cinema? Execs ruin every movie compared to 80s, 90s. Writers should ask for more. Ooh. Producers should ask for more, you know? I, I don't. I think the writers today are just run-of-the-mill, diluted. They suck. I was going to say, I think the problem exists to essentially all tiers now, right? Because yeah. we even have comments from higher-ups that are interesting in terms of turning the tide. You need some of the bean counters to be like, yo, I need you guys to make me money. However you need to do that, tell some good fucking stories so that they'll be like, good stories. How do we do that? I've only made, you know, I only was it was assistant writer on one episode of one TV show three years ago. So I don't know exactly how to write a $300 million movie, but I'll give it my best shot. It's like, hmm, that could be a mistake, too. This, this uh, you know, the conversations have happened over many years now. It's 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 this insane rot at almost all levels. Almost every way you could imagine how not to create a story, they're basically using as a 101. Like, you should definitely do this with no experience. Rush it. Don't even have a script. Always focus on like whatever idea you have first and just work everything toward that quickly, even if you yeah. then have to reshoot it entirely and zombify and Frankenstein everything in it. And then just yeah. shove it out. Just get it out as quickly as possible. Multiverse of Madness, yeah. Ugh. New Alien movie. Is there a new Alien movie? Yes. There was a new trailer, yeah. Oh. Mahler loved it. He's really excited. <sighs> oh, I felt very negative in that coverage but i don't care <laughs> i am a scorned alien fan <laughs> the, the that was like of... the most uh, like the most fucking tired fed up bullshit i've heard from you in a while i think reaction it's, to that simple trailer the thing is i think i saw and was interested in alien before star wars like that shit goes really mm -hmm. far back and like i said a strong memory of it is my dad being like i don't know if you want to see the third one and i was like what are you talking about like, Alien and Aliens is amazing. I need to see what happens next. And he was like, okay. <laughs> and I was like, 
What the hell happened? Should have listened to your father. Good parenting well, right yeah. there. Well, and what's insane, right, is it's that, and then it fails again, and then again, and then again, and then again, and then again, and now we're back to, this trailer looks good, though. Yeah. I'm sure the movie will be about as good as Prey, and that's going to be kind of... I've tried to explain this a couple of times to on other streams. I don't want that for that franchise. Alien and Aliens are incredible films. Like, great beyond great beyond great. I don't want them to end up being... What if the alien attacks a bunch of people on a space station that's even bigger than the Nostromo? It's like, okay. What if it attacks them in a jungle? You know, that's different than Predator because it's an alien. What if it attacks a bunch of people in medieval times? What if it attacks a bunch of people? What if it attacks like, ancient Egypt? What if they're on like a moon where the gravity is really limited? That could be interesting. And it's just like, man, I thought Alien was, it was just ready for so much more than that. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a like Wayland Utani I find fascinating, and I don't even know if they're gonna be fucking mentioned beyond being like a you know, like like a cameo, like oh shit, this this facility was built by Wayland Utani, and that's it. Like, okay, like the Burke stuff, all of the politics that happens in Aliens before you even get to like the mission, and then of course, all the character work, the world building, and then the mystery. Uh, I am very much uh, a battered and beaten alien fan, and seeing that trailer made me sad. And it's like, that's the opposite of what it's supposed to do. And I was like, I know. I really hope it is great. I hope it's fucking great. It would be nice if it was great. I'm just not a big alien fan, so it's not like, I don't feel as fucking spurned by everything as you do, I guess. Aliens is like my second favorite film of all time behind Prestige. So mm. it's, it's kind of drawn with like T2. Terminator is exactly the fucking same, by the way, as a franchise. It's kind of insane how much they match. The people who keep saying they should do something in Old Republic, please stop. It's the last untainted by current regime. That is true, which is why whenever I, like, give a pitch to do, like, a Jedi Mandalorian Wars or something, I say, I don't trust anybody to do it, but that would be cool to see. I'm curious about how Yoda learned about Darth Bane's Rule of Two since it was hidden from the Jedi to ensure Sith victory. Maybe Acolyte will show. I hope it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, let's hope Acolyte gets us that piece of lore in there. Yeah, no, please. Um, you know, Yoda's been alive for so many years, and there was a darkness. There was a dark time that he had, I think. I don't know why I'm thinking of year 400, but I remember reading something. I just can't remember where. Um, that he battled his own darkness, too. Bro, I mean, imagine being 900 years old. You're going to have some rough days. You're going to have some days where you're like, fuck the world. I don't even want to live to 50. I couldn't imagine living an entire <laughs> fucking millennia. <laughs> Fed up with shit now. How long would your Annie 3 be on sale? I really want one. I'm saving up for it and just don't want it to go. Oh, dude, don't worry about it, man. So the full site will launch this week or early next week. We're right there. And uh, my God, it is so much work. Because we don't want to just create something generic. But you guys will see when it's all said and done. Um, no, th it'll be up. It'll be up uh, forever. So you're good, man. You're all right. But, you know, with it, uh, with the site, there's coming 120 more options to choose from. And yesterday I just paid for the um, the order quantity for the stands, the Sabre stands. And then also the um, custom limited edition Theory Sabre exclusive that should be released May 4th as well. So exciting times, exciting times. Uh, and second, would you say it's your one-to-one -one MR? No. So this is more akin, the Annie 3 is more akin to, so what happened was Lucasfilm used TXQ's Annie Hilt for Ahsoka. And so it's a little bit different than ROTS. So it's, um, but even since then, it's been changed a little bit again. So it's not exactly like the Ahsoka show. However, it's, um, it's insp definitely inspired by. You'll, you'll have a shit ton of pictures to look from once the full site is up and videos and every Sabre will have, you'll see. You'll see. Mahler, why did you stop playing the elevator music when people argue? Theory, have you watched Parasite <laughs> the Maxim? Will you watch Parasite the Grey? I'm not, I don't know what that is. Um, 
it it felt like it was like a 50 50 between is that the rags and wolf music or is that the people argue music and then it was also like it had to be really petty arguments it couldn't be like a fair argument or an interesting one or a quick one it was like a perfect timing thing but i think it will come up i do use it in a super chat catch-up that hasn't come out yet because rags and fringy argue about something that's all i remember is it was super retarded and i wasn't paying attention so i put on music um and I think it got claimed too, but I was like, you know what? It's fucking worth yeah. it. I want Kermit Swayside sway now. Theory needs to see FNT binge versus weekly debate. That shit was funny. The boys are doing more <laughs> one more stream together. Love this collaboration. We said last week we're doing one more. Mm -hmm. Hey, Star Wars Theory Mahler and RK, gonna miss you, gents, during work. It's been great these past few months. To all which Star Wars character would you want to work? Would you want to do Death Sticks with Molly? What's your perfect Sunday? Oh, so many. My <laughs> perfect Sunday. Fucking question, dude. What Star Wars character <laughs> would reference Death Sticks <laughs> with? Uh, Jar Jar, right? It's your perfect Sunday. Honestly, I kind of want to just get high with Padme and Smash. So, Padme. It's fair. Don't make it too sad, though. She'll die. And it's going to happen eventually. <laughs> Might as well be me that does it. Uh, perfect Sunday. I don't know. Just fucking hang out with some family, have some fun, friends, talk some media, watch some movies, play some games, go on some adventures. Long walks by the beach. Theory, have you watched Berserk 97? You're going to love it. It has a guy with big muscles as the protagonist. Oh yeah, well, that's you know that's all it takes for me to love something. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I have not seen Berserk ninety seven, dude. Uh, I never got theory to sing the saga begins. Maybe I can get him to sing one of Paul Simon's songs about Carrie Fisher. Maybe, maybe not. You guys will better. Fucking take Theory's last proposition. Love the show, guys. And Ryan, you want to bang? Uh, send picks. <laughs> There's a 70% chance they won't. But 70. There's 30, yeah, there's a 30% chance that they might. So, you know, holding on. Holding on. I'm interested to in know, too. Yeah. It's probably just going to be like a, I don't have time. <laughs> Mahler, I know we complain about Anakin's fall being too fast. It's just frustrating. I had to get a great explanation why it's so fast in Kotor. Um, well, I need to play Kotor. So, what do you mean so fast in Kotor? I assume they're saying they had they played Kotor and they got an understanding of why it was fast in that, or I don't know. But Anakin's not in Kotor. Yeah, yeah I but... don't really. I mean, I've played Kotor and I don't really understand. The, the comment necessarily either hmm. um not sure right. I, what I, one thing i really realized when i was watching revenge of the sith is that i need to read the book again because it's probably been a decade since i read revenge of the sith novelization which goes into so much detail uh about like kind of the things that are happening what's in people's minds as it's happening like the idea of mace windu like sensing fear and like kind of using that to continue to to pressure him with his Vapod style and Palpatine kind of being well, you think that's my fear that you sense and him realizing that it's fucking Anakin's fear who's coming. It, yeah, it's just novelization's awesome. Yeah, that sounds cool. I mean, the thing yeah. with me for the prequels is like we could have had three more movies, like you know, two between no, rather one between each one, maybe two between like Clone Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. And one between Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones, something like that. Like there was so much yeah. more. There's so much more story to do, and I would have loved it with those actors as well. That's one of the things I really appreciate. I don't know how you guys feel about it. Just, even McGregor's Obi Wan Kenobi, man, he's so amazing. Fucking mm -hmm. nailed it. <laughs> perfect casting and perfect execution. There's nothing. I don't think anyone thinks he he damaged Obi Wan Kenobi. He's like, nope. And it's really cool to have pulled it off because a lot of the time it just doesn't work when you do a recasting like that. Yeah. Especially with someone yeah. like Alec Guinness. Yeah. Well, that's different. That's next level shit. Yeah. What are your thoughts if they remaster the prequels, redo the VFX in today? No. It, it it holds up better than shit I'm seeing coming out right now. Yeah. Like, I, just don't see, I just don't see the need. Like It looks yeah. phenomenal. Uh, there, there's a couple things here and there, obviously, but um, for the most part, the 
the level of detail on some of these like battle sequences that they have, um, you know, shots in whether it's a Jedi temple or Padme's apartment or things. And just, it obviously has a look, right? It has a, a fairly clean look to it. Um, but in terms of like the, the style that they were going for, it looks phenomenal. I don't even think they need to touch them. No. For soundtracks, it's hard to beat Empire with the Imperial March, the Battle of Hoth, the Asteroid Field, Attacking a Star Destroyer, the Bestman theme, and Clash of Sabres. That's probably my second favorite one. It's a close fight, honestly. It really is, but I do tend to side with Revenge of the Sith. Mm. Question for all three of you. What's your favorite MCU film? Mm. Mm. Mine's between Civil War and Avengers. Probably Spider-Man 1, 2000, 2001. It was 2002. Oh, you mean like Toby Spider Man? Yeah, I think they yeah. when they say MCU, I think they mean Iron Man the... and after. Yeah. Nope, they can't do that anymore because now Spider Man is in the MCU. <laughs> That's, that is true. <laughs> so um, boo. Yeah. Like, I I move around a little bit. Obviously, the first Avengers is fucking amazing. Um, I even think Infinity War is amazing. I like Winter Soldier. You know what? The first Iron Man movie. I don't mm -hmm. know if it gets too much more perfect than that. And that was true. before everything started fucking going insane. It's true. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The first Iron Man movie's great. I mean, I think Infinity War was pretty damn awesome. I think Infinity War, for as many characters as in narratives as they had to weave throughout it, I think it's an amazing fucking movie. Like when you consider yeah. the level of difficulty of weaving all those different personalities and characters and stuff like that within it, yeah. I think it's an I think it's a bigger achievement maybe than anything else they had done. I, I think, think that's what everyone so had to gross. say when they saw it. It was amazing. We had like three major splinters of all of the big teams, and then they all like you know intersected, moved over in different places, and huge payoffs and development. Nice, and it felt really constructed. Then you watch Endgame, and it's like a mess. Yeah, a complete fucking mess in terms of. And it's just like, oh god, I guess they ran out of time with this one because they were all over the place. Should have just ended. <laughs> just fucking leave half the people dead. That would be better well, than Endgame. A lot of people say like, ah, oh, the MCU ended with. Uh, Endgame, Endgame, and it's like it's a way better ending at the end of Infinity War. A really depressing but kind of sort of poignant ending. But the nature of like, you know, sort of minor quibbles and, and petty differences can actually lead it just enough to destroy almost everything you've built. And you just be more careful. Because, you know, the, the, the thing I think that carries from Civil War into Infinity War is that the splintering of the Avengers prevents them from defeating Thanos when they probably could have if they're all together. Yeah, never never picked up the phone. But Infinity War is a good pick. Epic. Yeah, awesome. yeah. Would you guys ever do a stream with Red Letter Media if you could? I think that'd be fun. I don't know if they've ever done a live stream. I'd do it. Um, they've been on Macaulay Culkin's podcast, but I think that's about as far as they'll go. I assume, I don't know if there's anything like an actual word on this, but I think they avoid collaborations as much as they can. It's uh, I don't really um, need to. Like, I... Well, I mean, you know, it's fun is why you can do it, right? But, like, I think they avoid it for just the sake of... They they have a very clean and isolated presence online. Yeah. It's true. Volume way too low. Sorry. Nothing's maxed out. Uh, love you guys. You'll always have interesting takes, but who do you want the new James Bond to be? I'm seeing it might be Aaron Taylor Johnson. Uh... You know, I th I thought Henry Cavill could have been good. Idris Elba could have been good. I don't know, man. Daniel Craig and Sean Connery, I just don't think you can really top that ever. So. I mean, I think that I don't mind if it's Aaron Taylor Johnson, but I don't think he's actually been offered the role. There was a lot of whispers about mm -hmm. that last week, and it looks like it may have jumped the gun, or maybe he doesn't want it or something. But mm -hmm. Cavill is 40. So Cavill's a little bit old. I, I think he's perfect for it. I think they should have done it a while ago. Um, but I, I just don't know. He is also super recognizable, which if you look back at the history of James Bond castings, they're not going out there and casting like A-listers typically. True. You know, Pierce Brosnan was doing fucking Remington Steel, you know, when he when he got offered to do Bond. So yeah, I, I don't know. I'm fine with Aaron Taylor Johnson. I think he's like 33 or 34. Um, 
I, I have no idea who it's going to be. Brennan Mahler should write their own comic book. I'm not much of a writer. I guess I will fuck myself then. <laughs> <laughs> Finally started watching Game of Thrones. Ed Stark seems like such a good dude. Can't wait to watch eight seasons of this guy. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, he has a really great arc all throughout. You lose your mind. What starfighter would you choose if they were real? Bro. Wait, wait, wait. The Addy Mundi's <laughs> throbbing head. <laughs> <laughs> that face. That's a picture yeah. of theory. <laughs> With cum on top of his head. Hey, it's icing. It's cream. It's icing. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I crying? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not even gonna answer that, man. Fuck. Let's start with Chiss Clawcraft. How about that? Uh, Mahler, I've been bringing all your EFAP streams from episode one, binging it's episode one lately. Got to a particular episode. I'm curious, do you still believe water is wet? Yes. I disagree with Rags on the fundamentals. We can't have it's. We have this whole debate over is water makes things wet therefore it cannot be wet but you never encounter water in any other position than being surrounded by water therefore water is always wet water if you go down to the, the particle and say yes yeah, see it's not making things wet it, it or rather it makes things wet it isn't wet itself it's like nobody feels or experiences water at the particle they always have it in even a droplet is already way more. And that is, to me is like, that's what we call water. And that's what is wet. It is water is wet. Isn't there like a Derek Zoolander quote we could use for this? Yeah. But what is it like? Water is the essence of oh, yeah. moisture. Is the essence of moisture. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah. Merman. Merman. <laughs> Speaking of things that needed, didn't need sequels. Zoolander you know what would be too. hilarious if we had a stream one day where all of us were dressed up as Zoolander characters? Mm. I think you and I could be Hansel and uh, Derek, and then Mahler would have to be Mugatu. Mm. <laughs> That'd be funny. Yeah. Bro, on Zoolander 2, when he fucking rips off that fucking like, muscle suit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I didn't see Zoolander 2. Don't. It's bad. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see it. The one scene in Obi-Wan's initial attack on Maul felt so much more violent and authentic than any pitter-patter shit we've gotten in years. It feels dangerous and you're able to feel it differently. Well, dude, that's the that's that is Nick Gillard, man. That's like Yeah, like you know, the, the choreography <laughs> in the prequels is just fucking next level. It can't be beat. It it's kind of ironic be. too, because in the sequels they argued they were going for like a rougher you know. Oh, raw, away. they're yeah. untrained. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep in mind when they're doing this, they're using actual like sticks, metal, right? beams. metal blades, yeah. metal beams. Get whacked in the face or the hand, knuckles. I mean, like in the back of the head. Like, just imagine. There is nothing from any era of Disney Star Wars that competes with this. Nope. nope. Um, what is the what's the best one we've gotten? Do you think? Oh, that's a good question. Man. What is the best duel in the sequels? Well, Disney in, content in, in, in Disney canon period. So we can bring in like I think most people's answer is probably going to be Anakin Ahsoka. I, I think that. Lights maybe maybe the next one would be uh what's his nuts uh ray stevenson's character and ahsoka mm. <laughs> i guess would be the next one like i don't know man they which just, was still bad we we're still yeah, I wasn't bad. a fan of those but i guess they're better than the sequels yeah like, that's what i'm saying like by process of elimination it just uh, seems so slow like watch this and then watch those dude watching the uh do you remember the ray kylo one in rise of skywalker where like they're like the the way their lightsabers unclash is really fucking strange. Like they both keep doing like a, they like break apart really oddly over and over again. And then of course like, she starts. I don't even know why she was losing that one. Like it doesn't even make sense considering everything we do. And then she loses. Uh, she wins. I, anyway. I like this one to be honest. Where is Lord Vader? <laughs> I might be biased a little bit. But... Do you want to, uh... <laughs>
Do you want to claim Disney canon on that one? On mine? Yeah. <laughs> no. That's there my own go. universe. That's my own spin. There's no Disney influence whatsoever. At all. Video games count? Of course not. No. Thank you for all being humble, civil, and giving thousands of people entertainment. You guys are doing great things. Oh, thanks, Sinister Reviews. Whoa, biggest super chat of the day from Corey. He says, yo, gents, have really enjoyed watching the streams with you three. You each have a different unique take on Star Wars, which makes for fun and dynamic conversations. We'll be seeing you all on your other channels. Right on. Sweet. Thank you. Thanks, man. Pre Vizsla Darth Maul fight in Clone Wars, top five of all time. That one was pretty good, yeah. It's you know, tough. Probably... Like it's tough to count any animated duel, just because you are obviously you're limited physically what you can do, whereas you can do pretty much anything you want. This um, yeah. Oh, did you see? Hold on. I don't know if you see Savajo Press right there, Maul, uh, Mauler. I've seen this before. Yeah. Okay. That's the savage. Did you see the right original there. one. What's the original one? <laughs> <laughs> oh my the god! The spin, the spin. But with both, I am awful to sit. Look, he's getting away. Stop him! Yeah. He's smart. He leads them into like a one. -tier. He pulled a three hundred on him. Yeah. That was it. So hold on. Can you go back one second? Yeah. And at how pointless. Uh, <laughs> so not the air, but so when Savage comes down and he pl like plants his lightsaber in the ground, basically, and yeah. then has his like the other lightsaber guarding his face. Palpatine, uh, just it's it's after this. It's back when it's to the regular animation. Oh, it's right after they do their superhero landing. So this. Um. Well, just a couple seconds before. Just let it play from here. Watch Savage go down and like plant his lightsaber in the ground. He's got his other blade up, and Palpatine, for no reason whatsoever, just slams directly into its lightsaber. Okay, let them go down. Right. Here, look at Savage. <laughs> look at that. Look at the fucking sick it, lightsaber ignites to block it. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. At least it for no reason. Yeah, what about it? What? Like, what I mean is he takes both fucking lightsabers and about to fucking hammer him. I feel like that's been a yeah. problem throughout all of Star Wars. Anyone that has two blades versus one has yes. always been like a, hmm. Like, man, you know General like, Grievous. Like, what, what is the, like, exactly, when you have another opponent right there, what is the point of trying to slap both of your lightsabers through their fucking... Especially on the same plane. Now, if you're going to come around and do something like this that makes sense, then it might be unblockable. But like both lightsabers, same plane, fucking right next oh, to each other. Oh shit! You're, That's what I, I mean. I think I think your channel's been, this has been blocked. Chat is saying the stream's down. Yeah. Really? Yeah, Probably it's copyright. You showed so much of this. Yeah. Just wait for a little bit. Just stop showing. It'll come back up. What a joke. Stream should be back now. So you, you just gotta you can't play it for too long, or it does that. <laughs> It's like yeah. pretty watch for anybody that missed the it. conversation we were talking about how palpatine basically takes both his fucking lightsabers and holds them right next to each other to try to fucking slash through savage press instead of doing something else with another one of his lightsabers he's evil, he's evil yeah right he's, like, he's evil but he's also fucking really smart i don't believe i heard your take on the creator of god of war not liking kratos arc in the norse norse games any thoughts yeah, he said something along the lines of uh, don't inject your own like experiences and lives into the character just because the creators at the time had kids and that changed their lives. They shouldn't then force Kratos to have a kid and have his yeah. life change as a result of it, which I find complete horseshit considering he's dealt with two different kids in the original games and series already. So he's already had the father experience and the moving on and having a new one to explore that part of his character just doesn't doesn't assassinate or contradict anything at all. I have no idea what the big issue is. Uh, if people want to highlight problems with the storyline or the characterization itself, go right ahead. But the concept of Kratos being a father, we've already had several examples, being his original kid, and then like how he behaves with uh, Pandora. 
Uh, God of War 3, as far as I'm concerned, if everybody rewatches how that game goes and how it ends, sets up all of the Norse era. There's no contradictions. There's no like, oh no, you're ruining it by not having him kill everybody like mindlessly or something. It's like, no, no, watch it. Right at the end, you, you can see all of the setup for Kratos' arc is about to begin significantly. Uh, he's he's He doesn't exactly enjoy or think well of his decisions throughout the first three games. Yeah. I love God of War. Uh, yeah, all of them, pretty much. Great character arc. I enjoyed it. Hey, but well. I, at the same time, I understand the criticism of, like, don't just inject yourself into a character, but I just don't believe that's what they did. I think that they yeah. focused hard on what they were doing with Kratos. They didn't just throw themselves in. I fully agree. Yeah, don't inject yourself into a character that's already established, but I think in this case, like you said, it makes sense. It's good. Uh, people are still saying it's blocked, by the way. Is, like, the whole stream down? No, a lot mm. of people are saying it's back. I guess it's coming back at different intervals for people. Oh, yeah. Some people are saying it's back, yeah. That's so weird. You can't even like react to anything, even if it's on mute. Mm. Which is strange. Even I like... reacted to that whole video, so it's like. I mean, there are there are ways, right? Like the ways we try to do it is you put up a an image at like half opacity, and then you mute, and you can basically play it. It looks awkward, but that's about as well as you can do it without them taking you down. It's bizarre. Yeah, it's it's up for me. So good. Whatever. Got blocked twice, but back now. Okay. Well, make sure you hit like button while you're here. Uh, hey all, Mahler and Ryan, has there ever been a movie series that made you guys cry? Uh, yeah, for me, Gladiator and Last Samurai. We'll miss you both. Thank you for your entertainment. Always reference T2's ending. That that gets to me almost every time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's... Anytime there's a fucking, like, children or a dog involved, mm. you know, might might get some tears out of me. Watching you three talk about the prequel trilogy really makes me miss feeling positive about Star Wars. Indeed. Yeah, I mean, uh, to sort of tangent on that sort of thing, I'm with you, and I like talking positively and hyply about, uh, you know, like like IPs. And so you just got to kind of find the ones that are still feeding you worthwhile content to d dig into and discuss and stuff. And I'd say, like, that's what me and Ryan are very hyped about with Hot D. It's like, that's going to start up, and we're going to be able to do weekly streams just talking about how fucking awesome it is. Hopefully. Yeah. So I know you're talking about Hot D as well if anyone is interested, but it'll be on my Fantasy Theory channel, and it'll be with my friend Nick. Uh, him and I will be discussing it in different videos. So that's nice. where I discuss, like, anything pop culture that's not Star Wars. Have you uh, have you watched season one yet? No, not yet. You gotta get out? Well, I guess yeah. you gotta tell June. I gotta get yeah. out, yeah. She can't do that. Shoot her! Or something. Patience, Viceroy. Patience. She will she die. Will die. God. In spite of your differences, you talk to each other respectfully about something that we all grew up loving and want to love again. That's what's missing right now in all of our countries. Yeah, I, I would even say that we don't really have that vast of a difference on things. Just maybe, what, like Andor? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's some pretty big differences in how we look at like pretty much any Star Wars stuff. And I think all of us value different things in some ways. Yeah. But... Yeah, I think, I, I think... The, the, we're able to format the conversation so that we all feel like we're on the same wavelength. We just have different experiences and values, right? Like in terms yeah, of yeah, we, yeah, like the whole like Anakin is. turning to the dark. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Well, like, when you brought up Andor, I feel like all three of us have a different POV on Andor and mm -hmm. how much we like it, right? It's like, they, and they very much can't coexist in the sense of what you like and don't like, but at the same time, we can easily talk about them. Yeah, like, there's no bearing on these guys being my friends or not. It's just like. I don't know. I think people today, like, you have to be friends with people who have the same beliefs and same views as you, and I just think it's super it's lame. lame. Yeah, that's like having... If the Avengers in that case would be... Everyone would be Captain America, or everyone would be Iron Man. It's like, well, what's... What the hell is that? Mm -hmm. It's just Ultron. Yeah, it's we really stupid. need diversity. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, the real people. diversity, because it's like, yeah. yeah. Like, actual diversity. Release the six-hour cut of Phantom Menace. Cool. Do it. Fuck yeah. I was about to listen to Binary Sunset before I go to bed, but it's safe to assume Disney is going to rename th that track to Non Binary Sunset. It's pretty funny. It's possible. I tried to appreciate the latest episode, but I really didn't like Fennec Shan's attitude. I like her in Book of Boba Fett, but not her attitude in this episode. Uh, yeah, Book of Boba Fett, she's a little more personable, a little more reasonable. In 
um, Bad Batch, she's more like snooty and uh, arrogant. I'd say elitist. I-, I would say she's a little like cold. Um, yeah. I feel like that feels more like her character was in the little we saw of her in Mandalorian. I think Book of Boba Fett, she took a turn. You have the willingness and capability of making custom sabers. I do. Yeah, we're really, that's how Theory Saber started, making custom ones. Um, we're releasing a new custom one May 4th. Found out in November my wife has cancer. It's not terminal. Oh, that's good. Ooh. Um, and feel like she needs a saber with a pink cancer awareness blade. Money is not an issue. Oh, I mean, well, I'll, first of all, I, I'm happy to hear that it's not terminal. Um, I, ho- I hope she'll make a good, quick recovery. Uh, but also, all of the blades are RGB, so you can change it to whatever you want. But if you're talking about the hilt to be pink, yeah, I'd love to make a cancer awareness saber. It'd be sweet, and then we could like donate a, a big chunk of the profits to breast cancer research. Um, that could be something we can look at down the line, for sure. Yeah. Um, the thing is, with that, I would have to make a minimum order quantity. So it would be like, you know, I'd have to make a minimum of, you know, a few hundred of them. Uh, and um, we could probably do that. When is Breast Cancer Awareness Month? Or or just, is there a Cancer Awareness Month? Um, October. Tuesday, October 1st. It's October. Yeah. So we could do something yeah. lined up probably for October. Something like that. That could be cool. I'm a cancer encyclopedia. Um, yeah, I'm sorry to hear about your wife, though, man. I'm glad it's not terminal yeah. or anything, but still a lot yeah, to go no. through. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really happy it's not terminal. Episode 2, also the best names. Sleaze back and Noah's a good one. Mahler, I agree with your take on the Yoda and Palpatine fight in Revenge of the Sith. Remember when RLM said that George ruined the Force and used that scene as an example? excuse for covering the disney star wars yeah i don't like i said i don't i don't i think we mentioned this on a previous star wars i don't i don't see what they do in that scene as anything past what we thought was possible with the force uh i um i think rlm also take issue with yoda even having a lightsaber so um just silly I think I think it's, I don't want to misquote, but I think he said something like, "You just you just don't expect a Yoda to feel the need to even have one in the first place, or something." And I remember thinking, like, I don't know if I buy that. Like, you know, because you, know, you don't see his lightsaber in the OT, but that doesn't mean that he never used one or anything. I, just, uh... I don't have a problem with him using a saber. I think it's cool. I think it's so badass how he conserves his energy and walks with the cane, and then uses all of the power of like 900 years of the force and just like becomes the most deadly weapon with a saber. Yeah, he reverts a, back to being tired. He's at a point in his life and his career that he doesn't he doesn't need a lightsaber very often at all. He shouldn't, yeah. right? But absolutely he's a Jedi, he's still going to have one. Like yeah. my my guess is that he um did he ever recover his lightsaber that he dropped in the duel? Probably not, right? Probably um, not. Yeah, and even if he had, I, if you're in hiding and you're pretty resigned to being in hiding, I don't even think you're going to bring, you wouldn't want to have that. Look at what Obi-Wan did, right? He fucking buried his for a while. Buried his shit, yeah. What's up, it's officials. To the last of a very fun, very short-lived podcast, Keep It Crumb and Ryan. You will never escape that salacious burn. Slash is bum. <laughs> I don't think he wants to. My sister no. Queens will miss this show. Thank you, Darth Shanene. Alas, does this mean we'll never get Mahler introducing theory to play Akbar's theme? I did. A couple streams ago. He's he's aware of it. It's uh well, it's just an EFAP meme. It's a good one. Twenty dollars ain't much, but I've been watching Rule of Two since the OG Mark and um whatever that guy's name was. I remember his dog's name was Leia, but for sure you all have been the most entertaining group to watch talk Star Wars. Thank you, Abalorian. Thanks. Thanks, bro. Thanks for reading the super chats last week. Almost forgot, but sending the note to my future self helped. P.S. Salacious will miss this podcast. Now, what will we watch while hugging his RK Elk post body pillow? Man, only two of those sold, so it's good to know that you have uh, that Salacious Crumb has one of them. Yeah, both of them. 
<laughs> yeah, when he has to wash it. <laughs> yeah, because all the crumbs, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't wash it, dude. He or crumbs dude. all over that pillow. He did not mm -hmm. The three of you, when you disagree on something, remind me of my brothers and I. During Thanksgiving, we don't yell at each other about politics. We yell about Star Wars. There you go. Fuck yeah. Is it? I, think, really I don't think we've different? yelled. I don't think we've yelled too much on the podcast. No, we've had some memes. Me occasionally, but that's about it. Reject soy wars. Embrace the expanded universe. Yeah. When the Jedi or Sith fart, do they create an unintentional force push? Also, if force users gain weight, do they get more powerful due to increase in mass? Mm. Yes to both questions. Yeah, I was gonna say that's actually like a very, like. If you because if you have more cells in your body, what if you get fatter? Are you are you getting more cells? Are you I mean, you more? are, but yeah. when you get more bit of chlorians, it's up to whoever's writing the lore, I guess. I would say no. I'd say you get more fat cells, but you don't get more bit of chlorine cells. Yeah. So they're like, um, <laughs> the theory goes that you know, Anakin once Anakin lost part of his arm, he's still obviously fucking super powerful. But when he lost part of his arm, he may have lost a, a tiny bit of that force potential as well that he could have possibly had if he had stayed intact the entire time. Same with Luke and shit. Um, so it's an interesting theory to be like, if you got really fucking fat, could you potentially just picturing have like more midichlorians? This poor Jedi, this you know, he's like teenager era. He finds out about midichlorians, misunderstands them, gets like overeats like crazy. And then ten years later, Yoda explains it to him. He's like, "Oh, you, you see, <laughs> he's like, he like sneaks into the Jedi Council chamber and steals Yoda's fucking hover round thing, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like collapsing under his weight. Yeah, it's like he's, he's, he's just skimming off the floor. <laughs> he's just like he's just like scraping the interior of the Jedi Temple. <laughs> Dude, that's hilarious. You, and fat, then there's man. a deleted scene of Anakin tracking him down and killing him. some <laughs> fat fuck. Yeah. slowly hilarious. Like, hovering away while Anakin's Dude, walking like, toward him I have yeah. to make that into an animation that's actually hilarious <laughs> um <laughs> Lizzo must have great potential yeah. goodbye weekly Stargrift looking forward to watching again for the big releases like the Acolyte by the way love the prequels and have been looking forward to the discussion right on yeah. thanks man we don't say no homo we say no diddy yeah, Diddy's house got raided, apparently, by the feds. Damn. Damn. A lot of gay sex going on there. Mm. Really? That's the story. Oh. Why not, I guess? If Yoda was at the Jedi Temple during Order 66, could he have stopped Anakin? Yes. I did a fan fiction where he went to Mustafar. Obi-Wan would got slaughtered by Palpatine. Yeah, we've been dead. Chidan... Ch Chidamine... Chidamine... Chatamane. Yeah. Chatamane. Force Gump know. sucks. Long lift the grift. <laughs> Keep that oh, Force Gump. This has got it out for Force Gump. Yeah. Thanks, Cody. Mm -hmm. Is there a chance of discussing the books more in detail? I love most of the books, but I don't feel like I hear people talk about them so much. Yeah, I mean, well, I have a playlist which goes over lots of cool snippets from different Star Wars novels. Uh, I'm hoping Ryan does something similar, too, one day. I, I should. I yeah, should. Bon voyage. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> what, you, you, you read the name? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go back. That's good it's guess. an appropriate name. Well, it's not really. There's nothing wrong. Figure Nagget is the name of that super chatter. So, within YouTube's terms of service, apparently. Who do you guys think was the most underused in the prequels? Who do you think was used just the right amount? Uh, underused mm. is probably Count Dooku or Plo yeah. Koon. A lot of people say Maul. Uh, I was going to say like, that's probably, probably like the most popular answer if you ask people. Probably. Uh, Dooku, yeah. Maul, and Grievous. I would vote all three of them in that. I wish I had all more of all of them. Um, but I think that stacks in order like Maul the most, then Dooku, then Grievous. Um, and then who's used the just the right amount? Probably Palpatine. You know, what if like. Uh... What if we had gotten an extra like hour of Phantom Menace and you kind of get introduced to uh, a little bit more like the behind the scenes shit going on at the temple 
and Dooku is still there and like Dooku's involved and everything. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. And then you see like and he's like upset at an action or whatever, and then Qui Gon dies and you see him like blow up at Yoda and leave the Jedi Order. Yeah. Yeah. Who's your favorite character from the prequels and why is it Darth Jar? <laughs> Are you Qui -Gon. you automatically fill in Darth, Darth Jar, -Jar. Jar, -Jar. Yeah, I don't know why I said Darth Jar. -Jar. <laughs> because that's his correct form. Wait, do you want to answer that question or? I said Qui Gon. Oh, really? He's your favorite from the prequel? I thought it was Anakin. Yeah, Anakin's overall, I'd say, but but Qui Gon is like, I think probably the who you'd want to be. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I mean, think... probably Obi Wan. Like Obi Wan. I think mine's Obi Wan as well. Character. Yeah. I mean, I, I fucking love Anakin, but yeah, you get to see Ewan in all three. Yeah. Ryan, how much? It'll only take a minute or two. How much? Batch how much batch is The Dawn is a big fan of. The crew of Acolyte Def took gender studies. Yeah. Probably. Thanks for the streams, boys. What's up, Sand? Thank you for everything, guys. Theory, hit me up if you need someone to talk Star Wars with. Star Wars is alive and well in the EU and in the first six films. What's up, Angry Badger? Any good Boba Fett comic stories? I once heard Boba Fett was originally going to be Anakin's brother. I have not heard this. But apparently uh, Obi-Wan has a brother. What? <laughs> yeah, from the Obi-Wan show. I don't even remember that. What? I Obi Wan's yeah, brother from. What's hey, his name? He's talking to Leia. He's like talking about his brother. I, That's I'm bro, like, I don't even remember that. Yeah, it was pretty stupid. I didn't like it. How would he even remember? I mean, I guess maybe he <laughs> Obi could. Too. But... <laughs> Obi too. Obi too. Obi Wan had a brother over on Stu John, huh? Maybe him. I just missed that. His name was Daryl. <laughs> yeah, Daryl could I still glimpses. I remember a baby. A baby? Yes, I think I had a brother. I, I forgot this. all about that sequence, yeah. Maybe it's General Grievous. Wouldn't that be a great twist? <laughs> no, he's a different species. What do you mean? That doesn't stop it. That could make sense. Sad to see you guys. What if go they had Omega's blood and they combined oh, that Jesus. with Grievous's <sighs> skeleton and Obi Wan's hair? You know, like if you get it all in, <laughs> and Omega's <laughs> accent, it just makes sense. Oh god! And that gets you Daryl to Kenobi. Sad to see you guys go. I'm loving these streams. Might as well give you mine. Host hot pastrami, toasted rye, salt and pepper, Swiss cheese, mustard, pickles. Banana peppers and crispy onions. God bless. I bet you someone from the stream is going to go make that sandwich. Oh, yeah. I bet you. That doesn't sound too bad. They got to know what it tastes like. It sounds freaking awesome. Mm. Every time I hear from people doing Acolyte, it's nothing but DEI, yet others get pissy when you notice the thing. Sorry to see this end, but keep up the great work. Ray Trailer for a mill dislikes. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised either. Get big ideas and intellectuals as guests theory. Big ideas and intellectual. Yeah, the philosophers. The philosophers. Yeah, big ideas. He's one of the Roman ones. Intell what I feel like you're trolling. <laughs> <laughs> Take me fucking ten years to explain the EFAP memes. I'd rather just go with like the end game, which is <laughs> very famous philosophers. Yes, big ideas. Can you read this one? I'm going to sneeze. Last Star Grip. Enough <laughs> to make a grown man cry. I blame Disney. They put out so much vile dog shit. Long man cannot keep up. Pretty much. You foster. Get Chris Stuckman as a new host. Ooh. Hell yeah. Interesting. Um, who's that? He's a film reviewer. He might be a little bit busy as well, but hey, it'd be fun. What are the absolute worst lightsaber duels from anything and why those? Uh, episode seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Anytime I see mm -hmm. Ray and Kylo clashing blades, I think it 
books it are just really watch. painful. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty horrible. I think there was some like the last obviously Mahler spent a lot of time talking about the last Jedi throne room fight and everything. I think there's some like interesting ideas like in that scene. And I think it's just the most poorly executed shit you can imagine. It's like they did one take and we're like, ah, fuck it, we'll fix it in post. Yeah, literally, but yet yeah, we won't. Yeah. How would you make a Star Wars L4D game? Death Troopers or like Vong Slaves or something? Shame it's over. Left for Dead? Oh, that, I was going to say, what the fuck is L4D? That makes sense. Um, yeah, I guess you could do zombie stormtroopers. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I haven't played too much Left 4 Dead. So. Until, like, yeah, I mean, it's not, there's, there's a set of main classes. You could probably find Star Wars equivalents for a lot of them. Um, yeah. Smokers, I'm not sure. Maybe that would be Jar Jar Binks. You need a really long tongue, so that could work. <laughs> zombie Jar Jar. Me's going to eat you. For sake of conversation, can you all three, can you list your top three to five Jedi and why? Um, hmm. I'll give you a quick rundown. Uh, Qui-Gon, Anakin, and uh, I'm going to go with Dooku today. Qui-Gon because he doesn't take shit. He doesn't listen to the council. Anakin because he's, well, he's Anakin. And then Dooku because he also follows his own ideas and found out that the Jedi were actual pawns of the political game um mine's gonna be grandmaster luke skywalker actual luke skywalker from the eu uh jason solo um kip duran uh corin horn and kyle katarn there you go that, that's my top five i i reserve the right to change the order though yep <laughs> and also the list I would probably gun for, uh, I guess, the Anakin Vader overall idealized vision of that story and what it means. And then the same for Count Dooku. With as little as I think there is to gain just from the movies, there's still so much about what you know about him that I think is fascinating. Um, and I would, I could do with a fucking movie all about Count Dooku. Like, it's, uh, yeah. it's just so much to work with. And then, um, yeah, Luke, just OT Luke. I've always loved his story. You still got to watch Tales of the Jedi. That's a short watch, Mom. Mm. Cheers, fellas, to a great run. I'll keep watching you all separately and for the reunions. Much love. Much love, dude. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Isn't it funny that Disney got George Lucas to come in and say making Star Wars isn't for amateurs? Meanwhile, the showrunners are literally bragging about hiring writers who've never seen Star Wars. Mm. Indeed. Disney knows it is having a quality issue with Marvel and Star Wars. The question is, why won't they change, especially when it comes to all the lost money? I don't know why they won't change. Politics and agendas. You guys think Vanestra Rowe will be will use her light whip? Yeah, it's confirmed. 100%. Is Stargriff ending because of conflicting schedules? Sad to see it end, but it was fun while it lasted. Yeah, the boys have a lot going on. It's got a lot of shit going on, yeah. Yeah, well, so... I saw a lot of people saying, like, Mola got burnt out. It's like, no, I, I'm the complete opposite. I'm firing all cylinders. I'm on all kinds of shows and making all kinds of videos. Uh, it's just that I, I can't fit in another one. I wanted to try. Uh, and you know what? I'm, I'm glad we got the 14 episodes uh, with specials to come as opposed to zero. You know, like, we, instead of just blocking it out entirely, it was fun that we did it. Yeah. I'd rather think of it that way. Yeah. We need to see Pharaoh Ryan for the last time. Maybe if What's you stick bro? around at the end. Please sub mm. to Mahler and Ryan's channels. Yeah, they're linked in the description. You can refresh the stream if you need to, but they're there. I've been making my way through Return of the Jedi EU. I'm on book 17 of the NJO series. Is the Jaden core duology any good? Also, Ryan mentioned after NJO, Kip doesn't play a big role in the story. Such a shame. Yeah, so the Jaden core duology is interesting i they're not my favorite books but i like jaden core because he's your character from jedi academy game and shit like that i enjoy them but they're a departure from the kind of very structured um like series that are coming before you can both you can read both of them almost as standalones between rip is a riptide and cross current i think that's the the name of those but um yeah, Kip does not play a massive role in the story afterwards, which is a waste because he's a badass. 
All three of you guys are incredibly passionate fans. Love watching your content. Thank you. Have you guys checked out Severance Season 1 from Season 1 to 2? Underrated shows with a lot of good stuff. I have not. I think that's an Apple TV show. I have yet to check it out. Homer Simpson, this one's for you. The dono is the same color as your skin. 8 out of 19 in NJO, and Vector Prime was really good. I cried at the death and the funeral of Chewie. Manly tears. There you go. Spoiler warning out there. Um, but yes, thank you. And thank you, Rossi. Did you hit 300K? I did, yeah, the other day. Oh, chat, um, we got to give him some, some, I don't know, some balloons or something like a cake. Ooh. Cake emoji in the chat. Just spin. Yeah. Celebration, fireworks, something like that. Thank you, guys. I appreciate yeah. it. Good job. Thanks. I think George's direction of revenge is the strongest. I love how the movie flows, but the score is so beautiful and the CGI mostly holds up too. Always love you guys together. Thanks, Zed. That's nice. Thanks, Zed. Me. Yeah, Next like I, I've be... the way I've always viewed George is that he is, I, I think, is a fantastic storyteller. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I don't think his strength is as a filmmaker necessarily. I think his strength is storytelling. Um, and but I do think that Revenge of the Sith by far is like the best of the prequels when it comes to filmmaking as well. I agree. The next Star Wars movie should begin with a character standing over a handsome, uh, a headstone that reads, so I was looking at Ryan and I just got confused, uh, over a headstone that reads Ray Skywalker and saying, this will begin to make things right. Oh, jeez. That'd be a, that'd send a message, huh? Man. <laughs> Did you hear about some inappropriate touching Hayden... Someone someone inappropriate touching Hayden in Indianapolis Comic Con? No, I did not. Didn't hear anything about it. It's weird. Let me pull it up. Is it <laughs> I hope it's someone inappropriately touching him. Uh that's what I hope the story is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. Not that I want Hayden to have to go through something like that. I'm just saying. No, no. Rossi for five bucks says best sabers on the market. It's no theory www.theorysavers.com Can chat tell us something about this? Did someone touch him weird? I don't know. Hey, thanks, Rossi. I would use... yeah, And sorry for, to everyone who's been wanting uh, Theory Talk streams every night and uh, streams on the gaming channel. We're pretty much in the end game now for the site to launch. And once the site launches, you know, I'll have more time. But right now it's crunch time, baby. So a lot of work. That we still have to do. I would use Siruk Tech to put Vong into machines or graft machines onto Vong to be kind them. Mm. That'd be weird. Check out Jedward. What is that? Thank you, Birdman. Apparently he's cool. Is that what is that the Anakin thing? I have no idea. It's uh -huh. just somebody spamming check out Jedward. Oh Jesus. Uh, I haven't been around much lately, but I do catch the streams on replay. I just want to say I like many of the people on before. I didn't like many of the people on before Mahler and Ryan, and I'm really going to miss you guys. I, mean, I Yeah, I, I like these guys a lot, man. We're going to miss oh. you too, X-Ace. Yeah. I, used to I be like, like you guys too. I used to like you, Mahler. Giving us Ryan, funniest YouTube YouTuber <laughs> alive, theory, still full of hope, and you together was everything. I didn't know I needed it in my life. Then you got overwhelmed. Sigh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I used to like you until you couldn't do this stream anymore, Mahler. You fuck. <laughs> Thank you, Nothing. badass, for the uh, compliment. Did you ever hear back from Hayden after Orlando? Let him know you're looking for a new co-host, eh? <laughs> I think Disney might have something to say about that. <laughs> yeah, well, he said next time he's in Vancouver, so. Rest in piss, Pende Joss. Gonna miss this show. Pendejos. <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> Why don't they ever hire Pete? <laughs> oh god. Pende Joss. Pende Joss. Why don't they ever hire people that write well, just put it one word? Why did you put it two words? <laughs> he he may have had to space it because YouTube wouldn't let him type it. Oh. Why don't they ever hire people that write stories uh, for games to write? For these projects, they seem to get things right most of the time. Theory, have you seen Dune 2? I did, yeah. 
I'm, I'm firing up the Movie Bros channel again, so um, be prepared for some movie reviews. The first one is going to be immaculate. Word is Keanu makes a cameo in Acolyte, possibly as Revan, I'd assume, in an explanation of Sith history. Maybe I think that's a holiday. bullshit. I think it's a bullshit rumor. Yeah, I don't think it's real. But maybe. But it'd be cool. I think Omega will secretly teach Crosshair the Force. They won't know at first, but them meditation, I could see it and would make Crosshair get him, get his aim back. You know, it's, it's funny. When I make a video about the Acolyte, it's like, you know, 100 to 200,000 views. When I do the breakdowns for the Bad Batch, it's like 50,000. Like, no one, 70,000. No one's okay. watching that, yeah. No one's watching the Bad Batch. It, it's just, an, no. like, even, like, again, the, there's just not as big of an audience or a care factor for the Star Wars animation. And I know this channel's full of people that fucking love Clone Wars. But the <sighs> level of interest in it is, is not the same. I would as disagree. the live action stuff. I would disagree. Fine. I, I'd agree, but I disagree. I, I'd say just for Clone Wars, there's a huge, huge audience. But anything other, any other animation besides Clone Wars, like Bad Batch, even Tales of the Jedi, you know, that did pretty well. Um, do, when do, I was making do you know? Video. Do you know why nobody had any idea what the fuck was going on when Darth Maul showed up in Solo? Yeah, because the no general Star Wars audience is not familiar with the Clone Wars. Yeah. Now your audience is because your audience is full of people that really fucking care about Star Wars. Yeah, there's but there's I, a big yeah, mix yeah. of people. Yeah, but yeah, no, I know. I know. I think Omega will secretly teach Crosshair. The, oh, I read this one. Crosshair. If you need a co-host, I'm your guy. My favorite character is Reva, and the Force is female. We could have some interesting debates, probably. Farewell, Star Grift. It's been fun. Walrus Jedi Gaming. Thank you. <laughs> Sweet. Right. What's up, boys? Hate this is the last stream with all of you, but best of luck to Ryan and Mala with everything. Just got my mall saber. It's everything I wanted. Oh, I'm glad you like it, dude. Remember, if you do a review, I'll be giving you guys discount codes. So if you post a review on YouTube, um, like a full review, unboxing and everything, I'll give you guys discount codes to your next saber. And that's something we're rolling out with the full site. So if I see it, nice. then yeah, I'll be sending you guys um i haven't figured out the percentage yet most likely probably it's going to be 10 percent so which is a, a big chunk i mean you buy a 500 dollars saber it's 50 bucks what's up boys hate this is the last stream with all of you best of luck for... did i just read this i did i'm losing my mind the force ain't female dumb ryan it's when if euthura bans turns back to the light and then tells her story and how she fell through noble intentions. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I guess like I, I don't recall specifically what that conversation's about, but, um, I, I can, I can see what you mean if you're talking about seeing her through Anakin best of intentions type of thing. <laughs> Blue eyed says review this. What is it? <laughs> it's, it's, it's oh yeah. <laughs> review this. <laughs> uh, wetness is a liquid's ability to adhere to a solid mauler. Water can't adhere to itself. No, it's not. Wetness is a liquid's ability to adhere to a solid. You can have like oil and water together, right? And there'll be a combination of liquids. Not that they s adhere. Um, there's all. One of my points is there's water, all different levels. Does water of make oil wet? My my point is that there's all different kinds of adhering, um, you know, from zero to full. I don't know when when does the adherence not qualify? I guess if you're holding it together. Um, besides, as far as I, let me check the wetness definition. All right, so <laughs> the the before. state the state or condition of being covered or saturated with water or another liquid. Yeah. You, the state or condition I, I, I of being covered said this. or saturated or saturated with water. You do not liquid. encounter water in any other state than it being surrounded by more water. That's how we interact with water all the time. You don't interact with it on like an individual particle level, like H two O. It's just that's just not how water works. H two O. H two O. Uh, Remember, because you... people are citing the definition, it's not just saturated, it's covered. So you... oil surrounded by water would count as the state or condition as being wet by that definition. What's up, Theory? You... Hey, they wanted the autism fight. They got it. Guys, what am I doing to you to make all my co-hosts <laughs> leave? 
he demanded I send him a sex tape of me butt fucking salacious crumb. He forced um, me to explain how. And I refused. Yeah. <laughs> Those are for me and my personal use. And I just felt yeah. really uncomfortable with it. So. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. But mo mostly it's because you know we we kind of got into this. So it was and it was fun. But me and Mahler both have a lot of shit going on. Um. So we just can't do it weekly like this. That's really the explanation. They're just covering for me, guys. So it was we are. Theory is very abusive. Yeah. And every time I insult Dave Filoni, he but he attacks me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. Physically. Yeah. I show up at his house. With a lightsaber. <laughs> Annie three. I call this the salacious. <laughs> whips me with it. It's right, out a light whip. All right, all right. Uh, my guest is Alan Dean Foster. Uh, have you heard you're looking for a designer and I've got a bachelor's degree and four years experience, including working for pro sports leagues. Where's the best place to send up before a designer? I'm not looking for a designer. Harambe-esque. I appreciate that, though. <laughs> if I will be, I'll, I'll let you know. Wet is a description for the state of liquid. Water is liquid, therefore water is always wet. This guy knows us up. He wants my cereal. We should get it to him. Came down on him. Down on who? On you, and you got banned. Yeah, or oh, the yeah, stream got suspended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's happened to me plenty of times doing like trailer or watching parts of movies or something. They that actually they, they take it down temporarily. They don't like strike your channel or they just take it down and let no. you know, hey, don't play it. Yeah. Mauler, I know you don't read, but I highly recommend Alien Earth War <laughs> Cher Cherbids Cold Forge. There are audiobooks Tribus. and Gibson's Alien. Three audio dramas is... Fire. It's not that I don't read, it's that I can't read. It's very different, but thank you for the recommendation. I might check it out. Who knows? There are Mickey Mouse on the hunt for Jedi. And then all they're going to find are Sith. Stream died for a few minutes, boys. Welcome back. Thank you. So far back we are. Django Fett versus Predator. Who wins? Django Fett. Predator. Fuck no. Stop showing clips. Ah! Fucking Django got nearly beat by like a little dinosaur. <laughs> that was just stupid. The yeah, I was talking to Nick. I was talking to Nick about that. He's like, it was pretty stupid how he died. He's like, I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah. He just wanted to be dead. He's like, he needed to go. And I was like, that sucks, that man. Stupid. Django in fucking Revenge of the Sith could have been awesome. Mm -hmm. Yep, he could have been. I know, stupid. No, but I think he'd take Predator out easily. Django, just, no. if, if he goes, if he goes invisible, his visor will be able to pick up. The, he has every sort of capability that Predator has. Um, he can Predator fly. Plasma Caster outplays any of the weaponry that Django has. No nah, man, he's got Beskar. Just freaking... Beskar's melting to Plasma Caster, and it doesn't matter anyway because he's you not think? fully covered in Beskar. Yeah. And if the predator's going to be locking onto heat signals, it won't be the Beskar rather yeah, but than. He, so what would happen is he would probably be like, "Okay, this guy's pretty good." So I'm just gonna have my, <laughs> I'm gonna have the slave one start shooting at him while I like burn him. We, or something we've like that. we've watched Django get his ass kicked a couple times, unfortunately. Like Obi Wan, yeah, but he didn't even use the Force in that fight. Which honestly, on rewatch, I was kind of confused about that for a moment. I was like, "Why isn't Obi Wan fucking him up with the Force?" Mm. Remember, he loses the jetpack and they have like a fist fight for a little bit. It's like Obi Wan yeah. could just fucking throw him. But he was using the Force through all those times. I mean, it. it when you're a Jedi, you're using the Force in perpetuity. Especially when he's hitting him with his helmet. He has to be using the Force. Well, yeah, but throw him, right? Just You want to get him away from you. You don't, you don't want to be punching and hitting a guy with armor. Yeah. I always wondered about that, it, too. There, there's always... It's tough because when you have a power like the Force... I was thinking about that when I was watching Revenge of the Sith because when they get stopped by the ray shields, to me, it's like fucking Anakin. Just, like, literally use telekinesis and fucking crush the power supply that's yeah. it, that's feeding like those shields there's it's hard because mm -hmm. it does feel like it's something with unlimited potential and there would always be a way to get out of something yeah. like the buzz droids right yeah mm -hmm. obi-wan should be fucking up those yeah, buzz just, droids. Like, using them with the force <laughs> yeah just crush them also yeah. someone is spamming chat right now Someone's saying Trump 20, 2020. <laughs> Which is very relevant to our discussion of Buzz Droids. <laughs> and then and then Ninja Turtle right behind him says Pende Joss 2024. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I had to I had to hide you, man. No spam. No spam. If you want to post a political thing, you guys can post once. Post it once. Don't spam it. Hail all. I hate to see the show end. SG became one of my top three favorite shows with FNT and Real BBC. You three have a great dynamic. It's like hanging out with friends. Look forward to it coming back when new shows come back. Me too. Yeah. There's still a 30% chance of hope, but the more I think about it, it's dwindling. I don't think so. 30% hopefulness. <laughs> it's like what when color... you start a new Star Wars series, huh? Uh, now it's like 1% hopefulness. What color lightsaber is best for my hamster, Ryan? Pink. Red. Dicks out for the grift. Cheers, gents, to 07. You need to watch Hachiko if you know, if you want Ryan to cry. Hachiko? I'll avoid it. Thanks. If you guys haven't, you should really check out the Star Wars Old Republic trailers. Of course, of course we have. Fucking awesome. Well, up until the newest ones, that one was ass. Newest one? What's the newest one? Oh, with Malgus? Is the newest one like seven years old or something? <laughs> no. Um... They just put out new ones? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, it's, 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 I think it's two years old. Is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know it is difficult. It's with the big fucking, like, yeah, yeah. If you notice with I, new I Disney don't think this Star Wars, ass, but go ahead. no, with new Disney Star Wars, every time they use lightsabers now to clash, it's like this big like. <laughs> it's like very bassy. Have you noticed that? And it's like super, it say, yeah. like sparky, I guess. Yeah, what's with the sparks, dude? Oh, I totally zoned out, dude. <laughs> oh, shit. Where you're completely. just watching? Yeah, dude, I completely zoned out. I was just like, wait, we're live. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't mind that one if that was the most recent one. Yeah, it was great. Uh, I love you guys. Best show on the internet. I'm back, Ryan. I miss the show. And to all that we're watching, Vader episode two is going to look like this. The fidelity will be the same. I, I like how be. this dude just mentions I'm black, Ryan. Thank you. Oh, I thought you said I'm back. No, he says I'm black, Ryan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Part one of two, Jake the Movie Geek. Ryan, the inhibitor chip arc fixed order 66 for me. Before, it wasn't believable that every clone would blindly follow that order and that they knew that order even existed. And that they knew Palpatine is a Sith Lord since throughout the whole movie they address him as my Lord. That arc in Clone Wars fixed that for me. Your thoughts? I hate the inhibitor chips. Um, I, I, I kind of despise them. I find it a lot more compelling that these troopers who are literally bred to obey the Republic, not the Jedi, they're bred to obey the Republic. And that despite all these experiences they have with them, when they're given an order, they obey their fucking commands and are forced to do that. I find yeah, that a lot more compelling than somebody being literally a fucking robot. They might as well be battle droids if they have a chip in their head. Fuck that. So the chip stuff that can't coexist with the 501st storyline in Battlefront 2, then, right? Correct. Right, I get what you're saying, yeah. 100%. Much love for all you do, especially you, Ryan. Thank you, my cum smells. <laughs> what? <laughs> my cum smells. That's his name. When you, you want yeah, you like me to say Mr.? Mr. Cum, Mr. My cum smells? Uh, in the middle of reading Death Troopers, one of the most unnerving zombie stories, Mauler, I know you can can't read but use the force for this one hmm maybe i know you can't read but read yeah death troopers is good. the only thing i don't like about death troopers is that it includes two characters that we know and we love i won't spoil it for anybody that wants to read it but i don't like the introduction of those characters because i immediately know based on when it's set that those characters are going to survive which makes it tough to be in a horror zombie kind of mode when you know those characters are going to make it out fine. That's my criticism of that book in general. Hail to the Grift. I'm almost done with the last command. What should I read before getting Hand of Thrawn? 
Um, I would, I would again, I'd read the Jedi Academy trilogy. Hundred percent. You really like NJO, eh? NJO is so NJO and onward is like my favorite era of Star Wars. Yeah. How how fast do you think you can go through one book? If it's a book I've like read before and familiar with, pretty fucking quick. I mean, I I could sit down and read. If I had a solid fucking like day of just reading, I could read one of those books in a day. Um, but I never have that kind of time anymore. So yeah. it's tough to guess. Mahler, you've spoken to Rick Worley since EFAP 84. I think Stargrift viewers would like his Star Wars videos. I recommend him alongside Nerdonymous. Small channel, very detailed, well researched, and interesting. I don't think I have really. Um he's he was brought on as sort of the Pre pro prequel side of a debate that is famously the worst episode of EFAP, I think, to this day. Not his fault, not anyone's fault in particular. Just the, the conversation was hilarious. We'll put it that way. And uh, yeah, I think uh, plenty of people have, have recommended and enjoyed his videos. I think he sort of covers the prequels very positively or goes into details that some people miss and stuff like that. Should Star Wars Legends be turned into a what if series on Disney Plus? Yeah, why not? I would be scared. For that. Uh, I mean, the idea in principle, yeah. Man, but, all they uh, gotta do is copy paste. Yeah, but they've they've shown they can't even do that. I do find it stupid that Maul came back, but I do think that the way he goes out in Rebels for all its flaws, I find a good end for this chapter. Yeah. What did you guys think of Luke in Book of Boba Fett nah. six? Um, there's nothing really to think about. I really enjoyed how much he clearly admired Ahsoka Tano. That was really my favorite part of it, was how he just valued her wisdom and stuff. Luke Skinwalker, my man. That's what that mm. was. Pixelated Ryan shirt? What's that? Uh, one stream five years ago, almost, my internet or my computer fucking crashed, and my entire <laughs> picture just went like pixelated for like uh. 10 minutes. That's and funny. I couldn't do anything without at least hard resetting. Mahler, do you Both know about the Dexter Jetster Jedi who dual wielded double bladed sabers? I mean, Pong Krell, he had two hands for free for the force and saber strikes. Funny AF. Wow. I, okay. I've never heard him referred to as the Dexter Jetster Jedi, Jedi that's, but that's funny. funny. <laughs> Obi Wan. It's treason then. There he is. There he is. Neat. Well, is that the case for Fat Mace is the chosen one? It's quite possible. Getting fat equals stronger in the force. The Fat Mace Windu theory looking more probable. <laughs> Jedi still have to stay in physical shape. Remember what Shadow Vow told Cade Skywalker in the Legacy comic. It's You're true. not in bad shape for a bounty hunter. Terrible shape for a Jedi. Yeah. I mean, physical training is a super important thing that the Jedi do that gets overlooked. I mean, look what fucking Luke, you know, was doing. Yeah. Fucking running through the goddamn swamps of Dagobah with Yoda on his back. Yeah, look at, look at Maul, dude. He's jacked. Mm -hmm. Well, he never has to, you know, he skips leg day, so. Word is Keanu has a cameo in Acolyte, possible, possibly as Revan, I'm assuming, during a Sith history explanation. Maybe this super was red when streamed down. Uh, no, it's being read now. Being read now. Yeah, I mean, Keanu being in the Acolyte would be cool. Maybe it was a hologram or some shit. It was great meeting you in Orlando Theory. Glad you liked George Stormtrooper. It was great meeting you too. What do y'all think of a Band of Brothers style Clone Trooper Stormtrooper series? Sad to see the stream go. Love you guys. I mean, like troops? Sure. You could do it. I, don't I, mean, think I, will, I feel like Bad Batch was like, yeah, but like good though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I feel like that was kind of the goal. I, that's what I assumed the goal of Bad Batch was originally, until I realized it's a backdoor to work in cloning Palpatine. But mm -hmm. yeah, I will do what I must. Qui Gon. Yeah, Qui Gon was the first to say that. If you had to choose between keeping only Star Wars canon or expanded universe, what would you keep? OG movies gone, but so would be Disney Star Wars. Uh, no, nah, the OG tough. movies are the best, dude. I can't. You can't get yeah, rid of those. Because without those movies, the 
The rest of the books mean nothing. Although, like, if you're telling me how much more time did I spend enjoying, like, in my fucking life, probably more in the expanded universe just because there's so much other yeah. than, like, two-hour movies. Yeah. But you can't, you can't take it away, though. No. You can't. I put more girls in the show so you guys can... Thanks, Kathleen. <laughs> how much for the manifesto, <laughs> Ryan? Please and thanks. Oh, you want it? That's what you wanted. You wanted me to read that fucking... He's um, saying give him a price, dude. Well, he already, he already super chatted, right? What the fuck? Um, is that the Nemec Manifesto or whatever? That's He's the gonna one. He's going to take Salacious out to dinner tonight, so, you know. He doesn't eat much. Other than dick. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me see. Hold on. Uh, all right. In an Omega voice? Yeah, I guess. Is this the right one? This is posted to the Star Wars and or Reddit. You don't have to no, probably is. I guess it is. So. There will be times when the struggle seems impossible. I know this already. Alone. Unsure. Dwarfed by the scale of the enemy. Remember this. Freedom is a pure idea, Batcha. It occurs <laughs> spontaneously and without instruction. Random acts of insurrection are occurring constantly throughout the galaxy. There are whole armies, battalions that have no idea they've already enlisted in the cause, like Crosshair. Remember, the frontier of the rebellion is everywhere, and even the smallest act of insurrection pushes our lines <laughs> forward. <laughs> and remember this. The imperial need for control is so desperate because it is so unnatural. Tyranny requires constant effort. It breaks, it leaks like Wrecker's brain. Authority is brittle. brittle. Oppression is the mask of fear. Remember that and know this. One day will, or the day will come when all these skirmishes and battles these moments of defiance will have flooded the banks of the Empire's authority, and then there will be one too many. One single thing will break the siege. Remember this. Try. There you go. That's Beautiful. Mine. Beautiful. Inspiring. Yeah. There it is. Can we get you guys best unlimited power to close out the Glorious Grift? No. Forrest Gump has it coming, boys. Long, girthy analysis coming this summer. Not all bad, though. Don't hate the guy that much. The script is the villain. Okay. I've all never right. met somebody who hated Forrest Gump as much as you. Uh, it's been a good ride, gentlemen. Thank you for the optimism during the dark times, Theory. See you on open bar, Mahler. See ya. Thoughts on the OG Willow movie? It's Ryan's favorite. Yeah, it's right. Well, it's fine. I'm not like it, I was not attached to it as a child or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, Serrano ham, Asiago cheese, pickled red onions, horseradish on rosemary, rhyme, ciabatta bread. You got sharp flavors here, boys. Holy fuck. You guys are fancy as shit. Yeah, you guys are fancy as hell, man. My sandwiches as a kid was like a piece of ham with some cheese. Yeah. What are each of your top 100 planets in Star Wars? Go for <laughs> Fuck yourself. <laughs> Thank Which you, Darth. That? Thanks, Darth Shanene. <laughs> Serrano Ham is also my favorite Jedi. Mahler, pretend you know th nothing about the Clone Wars at all. What would you want a series with that premise to do in terms of characters and storytelling? Oh, uh, we we would be going heavy into the how the clones work, and I would probably want to work within it from like a sense of if they all believe in the Empire, and they are all genetically modified to be persuaded to you know some not like the robotic sense but certainly trained to uh, be biased in a particular direction i would really want to explore like the ones that you know how they could be trained for like particular purposes and so you'll have ones that are meant for commanding and leadership and creative thinking for war so they would be higher ranks but you could also have like a backdoor accidental repercussion that those ones are the ones that 
um, creatively think to the point of not agreeing with a lot of the Empire's main positions, and so you can then create splinter forces everywhere that those ones lead groups that are either completely against or want to leave, or you know, ones that literally are just like, I don't, I don't want to be a part of this. And I know there's a lot of people saying right now, it's like, isn't that what Clone Clone Wars covers? I'd be like, probably not in the way that I'm thinking. I, I would want it to be a lot more, probably a lot more darker, a lot more serious. I quite love the darkest tones of uh, Revenge of the Sith. And then, of course, that's just the clone side of it. I want the expansion of like everything during the Clone Wars. I want to know a hell of a lot more about the Separatists and all of their motivations and how they came together. I want Saruman-level speeches from Count Dooku. I want him rallying systems. I want him to have really good points and positions. I want him to actually have a public debate at some point with someone and absolutely fucking wrecks them on like the Republic being a decadent, broken system that's destroying everything. Like, I have infinite ideas that I would love to see. And uh, I doubt, especially with what Ryan tells me fucking every other day, like, I doubt that Clone Wars will fill that hole for me. It might. Gotta watch it. Rack ghoul disease or 171A bioweapon? What's worse? Dude, I don't want to be a fucking rack ghoul. Fuck those things, man. <laughs> Go tour. Yeah, I'm not reading that, Ross. It makes no sense. <laughs> Thanks for the fun streams, boys. Glad to have been introduced to Ryan and Mahler. Lots of fun laughs and new insights. Thanks for all the hard work that you all do. Oh, thank you, Matt. Thank you. Nice thank you, Mr. Boardman. Matt also worked on episode two. This show helped me fall in love with Star Wars again. Started watching for Mahler and Ryan. Now I'm a Theory super fan. See you after Acolyte. Hey, right on, dude. Thanks. Nice. That's cool. We, we like Delivery man Q. Yeah, we got yeah. a lot of cross-pollination going on. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Dave is not all we have. Stop saying that BS. Okay, who else we got? Jay. Gilroy. Tony Gilroy. <laughs> Fuck Tony Gilroy. Why fuck him? <laughs> gonna unless there's a unless there's a Mary kill yeah, other didn't, people. Didn't didn't he say that like oh I, I half the time I forgot I was making a Star Wars project? It's yeah, like, but what? when you watch it, you know what he's talking about is that he's so focused on the characters' storylines that it could be placed necessarily in a way in anything. But that's like any good storytelling you want present in any particular IP. <laughs> you want it to work. You want the characters to start, finish, and develop in a particular way like you can fall into just the character itself and forget like oh yeah this is in the world of star this is in the world of you know darth vader and obi-wan and yoda and death stars and stuff it's like yeah you can forget that when you're in the nitty-gritty of some person in the middle of like some distant planet trying to hide from you know some person Fair building about whatever that's a good explanation but i think it also would be important to make sure you keep in mind that it is star wars so that you can in any sort of scenario where something needs to blend to the galaxy you are doing that and you're cognizant of it otherwise it's just uh, ends up feeling like some well, sort I of sci-fi blade runner thing like which is what i happened. i was happier with the way the empire's portrayed in that than i have been in anything else to do with disney star wars i know you <laughs> that's what i'm saying though it's yeah, like that I is know. a connective piece to star wars that i like to consider canon i think that they're very powerful mm -hmm. and organized would you say that's the only disney canon that you would consider um of what I have seen, we're throwing out the sequels, obviously. Throwing out mm -hmm. Solo. Yeah, out. I assume, I think we throw out Rogue One. Would you... uh, but Andor, Andor I'd really happily keep. I would say for me, Disney canon, that's like actual canon in my mind, would be Tales of the Jedi, Rogue One, Andor, mm. Clone Wars Season 7. Uh, not Mandalorian. <laughs> I'm throwing that the fuck out. Mandalorian season one and two. Uh, not three. Not Book of Boba Fett. Uh, Rebels. Ah Ahsoka, sure. Why not? Yeah, Rebels. Yeah, okay. Um, don't Ahsoka, include sure. Ahsoka. Uh. What else we got going on? Burn literally everything to the ground. That's how I feel. I already knew that would be your answer. Yeah, don't keep anything. I mean, hey, if we have that option, yeah, burn it all to the ground and redo it. Please. Not even redo it. Just burn it to the ground and, uh, and leave it alone. 
and yeah, never make another Star Wars property again. That that's that's preferable to me rather than continue with what we have. What if George were to come back and be like, "All right, I own it again." Ain't coming back, man. Look at me, fictitious. Fic- in a fictitious world where even though 12 years ago George didn't want to make movies, but he comes back now at the ripe old age of 80 when he can barely walk. Um if he I comes the- back, go ahead. Theories hypothetical would just be George, in, in, you know, in a capacity to create, be able to create them, creating them, I assume, is what you're going yeah. for. Yeah. Um, then I would say absolutely. Let me see more. 100%. Uh, chat, chat sounds like Yoda. He is too old. Too old <laughs> to make the films. <laughs> he, he is. He, I mean, uh, he is. Yeah. He felt, he felt like he was too old 12 years ago, you know? That's just the reality. Yeah, but that was a mistake. I think he made a mistake. Well, he's still, he's still kicking, man. He's still around. He, just, he ain't George kicking. needs to stop drinking Coca Cola and like take some stem cells or something, man. Like, what the know. fuck is the point of life if you can't drink shit that's not good for you? <laughs> well, he's, I don't know. Take some stem cells or something. <laughs> Obviously, baby blood. Yeah, eat eat a baby umbilical cord. <laughs> maybe maybe not that. Don't Somebody needs George. a Photoshop a baby umbilical cord on the tray for when he was in that Australia food court. <laughs> I can just sit in there. So we need a Photoshop of that. The George, fucking bloodborne umbilical cords. It'd be George perfect. extending his life to come back to save Star Wars. <laughs> George is palpitating. Theory in an emperor outfit, just being like, yes, yes. <laughs> At least one YouTube video will be made with this theory in mind. Yes. It's happening. He like, he's like, animates. He's like, why, why did you do this? You must be brought back. I don't want this <laughs> shit anymore. I, I have died this. before. Uh, have y'all seen the animated versions of the hobbit and lord of the rings oh yeah i've seen clips i haven't seen the whole thing i remember watching i remember watching the hobbit one that was from like the 60s or something right they're old yeah i I remember that one i don't know if i ever (laughs) i am old the filmmakers (laughs) (laughs) what's your favorite disney trooper design uh disney trooper none i i like uh shock troopers and five first that's not disney Disney Troop. I love the Zombie Troop is the best. They're my favorite. I like how they have random red wrappings. Ryan oh, so that. cool, dude. Ryan loves that. Ryan loves the red Sith Troopers from Rise of Skywalker. Oh, they were so, so cool. cool. They were red. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that means bad because the bad guys have red lightsabers. The Final Order, which is so clever because the other guys were known as the First Order. Love you guys. Wish you the best individually. What would you think... What would you three think about X-Men 97? I haven't seen it. I, I only the, watched the I first the episode. Yeah, I only saw the first episode, and so it's a little too early to make a decision. Uh, the animation a little wonky. Voice acting is a little wonky. I feel like the story is about to take a turn. Um, but again, I haven't even watched the episode two yet. So I probably will watch the entire season, though. Pendejos is my second favorite job. Pendejos. <laughs> what force power does Corn Horn have? I seem to recall it was an unusual in reading. I Jedi, but cannot remember fantastic book, by the way. Um, yeah, so what is the fucking name of it? It's basically the ability to uh, absorb and convert convert energy. Um, so he's like Sebastian Shaw from First Class. <laughs> so it's... Uh, God, there's a fucking very specific name for it. You remember the Old Republic trailer where Satil Shan stops the lightsaber with her hand and is yeah. like absorb it? That's oh, what it is. Two to minutes? Um, Two to Menace, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, he's super skilled in Two to Menace, but he can't, he, he's not gifted telekinetically. Um, unless he is like kind of super powered level, absorbed a lot of energy, then he can use telekinesis. Mm. What's more powerful, Ryan's lust for salacious crumb or his fidelity to Brie Larson? Something's got to give. Bro, I would murder salacious crumb if Brie Larson married me. Obi Wan Kenobi said the Force penetrates us. So how could it possibly be female? I'm straight actress Michael. Michaela digs, digs that Michaela. ass. <laughs> All right. I want theories take on if grapes are weird olives. Well, <sighs> um, I don't even get that. No, not. simple yes or no question. Yeah. No, they're totally different. One's sugary, one's oily. Well, one's this is weird. 
They are weird. No. I think olives are weird grapes. There you go. That's my take. I mean, you can make wine from grapes. You can't make wine from olives. Can you? you can yeah, olive, olive wine. oil. Olive wine. Mm-hmm. Question for Ryan Theory and I guess Mahler. I guess. Is it ever explained how Yoda knew of the rule of two? Also, what should I read before DP? Thank you for the best streams ever. Wish you all well, and I guess Mahler too. Love you, Mahler. Hello. If you're asking about Darth Plagueis, you don't really need to read anything before it. That's when you can, as long as you've seen the prequels, you can hop right into it. I wish there was a prequel to Darth Plagueis, man. It talks about Tenebris. That, like, the, the most useful prequel... So Darth Plagueis will be the Bane trilogy, to be honest. And that takes place a thousand years it's before. Like so far but it, back. it sets up the rule of two. Um, and that's really the only other thing that would apply. In terms of how Yoda knew, I mean um I I may have forgotten a story or something. I don't know. There was at one point in time a moment when well, we do know this. We do know that the Jedi sent a strike force to try to kill um to kill Bane. And they were basically tricked into thinking that they killed him. They thought that they killed Bane. Um, and maybe that's when they thought they ended the line. Um, obviously, Yoda has access to 900 years worth of knowledge from the Jedi archives. There was a story at one point about a Sith who tried to turn back to the Jedi and the Order, and like they almost got fucking wiped out because of it. Maybe that's how. I don't recall right now. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he's lived for a long time, so I would imagine that, you know, during his maybe research or dark times, he probably saw some sort of a hologram, um, holocron with, you know, Revan or something. Can we expect commemorative Stargriff plushies? Uh, probably not anymore. <laughs> Mahler, imagine think... if we release that like six months from now. <laughs> Why not? All I have been playing video games for 30 years. Argument destroyed for story in video games. All right. Which one? <laughs> like all of them. <laughs> Atari. Uh, member for six months. What's up, nerd dumb? Three versus three. Who wins? Mace, Anakin, Yoda versus Dooku, Maul, Sidious. Shit. It's a tough one. I, I mean, I would say Yoda, Anakin, Mace. Fuck, that's tough, dude. Let's be real. Padawan Obi Wan Kenobi ended up defeating fucking Maul. Okay. Um, yeah, but a- a- Anakin Anakin took out Dooku. Um, really? I don't think we should go by that as like the definitive one is better than the other. Because yeah. I know if they're all matchups and things, right? Obviously, fucking Dooku beat Anakin and Obi Wan at the same time. Then a couple years later, he got yeah. fucking his hands cut off right before his fucking head. Sidious His powers know, have doubled since they last met. If those two are distracted, man, I think Sidious would just... just it's easy game. He just kills everyone. I wonder if um, the fact that it's a 3v3 changes it as well in terms of how well these three work with each other. It doesn't because it would literally be a one verse 5 Sidious doesn't care about Dooku and Maul. He would just use them as body shields. That yeah, but that still does count as to whether or not which team would win, right? I think I think any any team with Sidious would win. Nah, I like listen. I Sidious fucking went toe to toe with Yoda, ends up beating him. I could see a situation where Yoda fucking wins that fight. Like I, I don't think he's like out fucking classed by Sidious at all. No, well, I mean he you know actually I mean? lost that it fight because he fell back. They both fell back, and one of them had a worse fall. Like exactly, <laughs> that's it. So yeah, yeah. So I just think that. It's like a street fight where you stumble over a rock, and it's like, it's like in Troy, like get up, Prince of Troy. I'm not gonna let a rock take my glory. Hmm. It was like that. Yeah, so that's why I feel like it's not super like outmatched just because Sidious is on one team. And what Anakin are we dealing with here as well? Because does the does the character come into play here as opposed to just their skill? Let's do episode three. Because if it was episode three, Anakin. Yeah, probably. If you plucked him from when he kills Dooku, like that sort of Anakin. Yep, that moment. Then, yeah, you've got you've got a lot of power on their side. And 
but I mean, you know, Mace and Yoda, they, they have some feelings toward Anakin, you know? Meanwhile, Dooku, Maul, and Sidious, I could see them being pretty unified on just wiping out the other three. I could say so. Ryan, 2024. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Real talk, I'm going to miss this a lot. Love you guys. Love you too. I don't know if you agree with me, but I think the only way to salvage Star Wars is to adapt the Legends timeline into a What If series on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, I'm down for that. What's up, Atten? Turn 27 tomorrow. Advice, guys, to have a great year. Uh, follow your dreams. Be true to yourself. Work hard and uh, be healthy. Happy Find birthday. a loose woman. A loose woman? Yep. Loose. Yeah, like those lightsaber whips. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyone else confused on how Anakin in Ahsoka works? If you can pull anyone into the world between worlds, why not just do it to Sheev? <laughs> just kill him. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, like trying to, he's planning out everything like a young sheep. And then Anakin just goes, "Hey, <laughs> like, it's like what's fuck. up?" He's like, ah! "Yeah, World Between Worlds is fucking retarded." It that is, is... And, and nobody knows how it works because it was intentionally vague. Yeah, because some people think that makes it seem smart. If you don't explain yourself because you have no fucking idea how it works. What's up, happy console gamer? Ryan and Mahler, I will pay to make up for 30% if you guys keep the collab going. Theory, I was asking about a custom hilt if it's possible. If you were serious about a cancer awareness sale, I work in a hospital. Um, It, would, it wouldn't really make... To make one, I would have to make at least 200. That's how the factory works. So I'd need an MOQ, a minimum order quantity of at least 200. So let's say the Sabre, I don't know, what, what's it going to cost? 300 bucks, 400 bucks, 200 bucks, you know, that's, that's a minimum of 40 grand, um, right up there for one saber, right? It, it just doesn't make sense to do a one-off. So I would have to do a whole bunch to at least make the money back. Um, and then, you know, you're putting a portion of it into, um, charity. So it's, you'd have to look at all the numbers and see like how it's possible. It's just right now, it's not really something that I can afford. So, um, yeah, I'd love to do it, but I mean, it would probably be down the line. As for the um, the making up thing, is like, I love the passion, appreciate everyone's investment in the show, but like, it's really not down to the money. I, uh, it wouldn't. I, I would happily do it uh, as a fun thing that we do if I had the time. Like, if, if it was no way we could make money from this, I wouldn't be opposed to doing it. It's just, uh, it's just not going to work scheduling wise. What do you think of the name Sheev? It's funny. Oh, funny name. Theory fucking... 2 and 2 is not balanced. Dark side is bad. <laughs> Got a question about Vader. Do you need CGI concept artists for this film? Would love to join the team someday, whether that's Vader or next. <clears throat> right now we're good. We got everyone that we need. Uh, they're all around the world working. And, uh, you know, we'll pick up new artists every month. Drop them. New artists. Because people go off to the other projects and stuff, so. We got a great flow going. Appreciate you requesting. Theory, do you meet up in Toronto? Sure, I could one day. Never been to Toronto. I was going to say, isn't Toronto like a long ass way away from you? Five hours. Oh, that's not that bad. Okay. It's like Florida. Florida's six. Well, Disney should. Wait, you're talking about flying, right? Yeah, flying. Yeah. Okay. Toronto's like on the East Coast, though. Yes. All right. Disney should just go full SJW and embrace the forces female and have a rainbow-haired 500-pound woman wielding a red whip saber in drag. It'd be pretty cool. Have a fight with uh, Vader in the World Between Worlds. Yeah. Don't give him good ideas. Vader. And then it wraps around the saber in his neck, and then he says, I'm sorry. And then the helmet pops off and he's crying. And who's your daddy? And then, yeah, the helmet pops off. And... um and then his head falls off. Mm -hmm. And then Maul appears. And then he cries and says he's sorry as well. Yeah, yeah he says, I'm set. sorry too. <laughs> Hi from set. Just a fellow fan filmmaker here. Right on. What's up? Gina Carano is supposed to be at PhillyCon. Want to go bad, but I'll have my son. And I heard there will be protesters. Do you... Do they keep them outside? Do, there ain't or... going to be anybody protesting. You don't have to worry about it. 
Yeah, go see her, man. There'll be like, if there is, it'll be maybe two people that are probably 600 pounds combined that have weird colored hair and they'll have masks on and they'll be holding up like misspelled signs. You have nothing to worry about from that shit. Gizatron. He said, I'm black, Ryan, not I'm black, Ryan. Oh, maybe he said he's black me. Is that, uh, yeah, you oh, the okay. comma. Big into fitness and I've always tried my best to imagine what kind of physical training the Jedi do. Lifting to Jedi Temple March music goes hard. It sure does. She tried to do the face. What company do you trust with Star Wars instead of Disney? None, really, to be honest with you. No, no company. I meant to say that I'm black to say I don't think he's racist. I love the show. <laughs> Hell yeah. I knew what you meant. You should Hell yeah. You should tweet it, Ryan. This show helped cure my depression and helped me reconnect with my children. That's probably over now. I get it. Y'all are busy. So, hey, I'm still available. <laughs> don't put it uh, on me, man. What the fuck? I'm well, you can get it. Guys, I'm, I'm, trying to, yeah, I'm trying to make it as lucrative as I can for them. Like, you can get, you get triple. myself. Yeah. It didn't exist before, and now it does. And now you can watch all three of us in our corners of the internet, giving you triple the anti-depression and reconnection. Isn't that great? Sucks this show's going to end. Love listening to you guys. I mean, I will volunteer as tribute to ensure the show goes on. Also, thanks. Thanks, Dan. Well, you know, let me let me hit them with the proposition after. and it's, uh, Maybe they'll... I don't know. Uh, what figures... Ryan, what figures are next to Revan on the desk? What? Over here? So uh, This is Gina Carano. This is Darth Nihilus. This is Jaina Solo. And that's Darth Revan as opposed to the Jedi Revan. So no Darth Maul, huh? All right. That's no. Okay. It's fine. Why did Yoda and Obi-Wan send baby Luke to two random strangers out of nowhere when they never even met them? Only Anakin and Padme met them in Episode 2. No relationship in prequel trilogy whatsoever. Because at least of anyone that they'd send them, at least those people would probably be a good candidate. It does have some connection to his family. family. Yeah. I mean... Uh, I think this goes back to the OT as well as kind of an issue. I'm not sure it makes complete sense the plan to hide on Tatooine with, with well, on his birthplace. Yeah, yeah, birth no, home. not yeah, the yeah. greatest idea. Like, probably better places to hide him. <laughs> I just don't. I think that's a result of like different story ideas moving around until they'd finally settled on what they were doing. Right. Rogue One is Andor. If you try to cram Andor into three episodes. Um, hmm. kind of. I don't remember Rogue One being as strong as Andor in its non-action segments. You know what I mean? I thought Rogue One was fucking dog shit until the last twenty minutes, hmm. and then the last two minutes when Vader showed up went all fucking crazy. Garfield's bizarre adventure says my Hollywood sources have assured me that the Acolyte trailer is fake. Leslie Headland is actually fired, and George is buying back Star Wars. Oh, that'd be nice. Sweet. I feel like I've heard rumors like that before. Ryan, what's your favorite and least favorite Harry Potter book? Oh, good question. Um, my favorite switches between uh, Goblet of Fire and Half-Blood Prince. My least favorite is probably Order of the Phoenix. Um, I don't hate it or anything like that, but that was probably like my least favorite one that came out while I was reading them. Uh, and ironically, it's one of my, it's one of the movies that I enjoy more. Because I didn't love the book. What would your Kenobi series premise look like? Uh, it would look like the book where Obi-Wan is in hiding. He doesn't go off planet to fucking save Leia or some shit. He's doing his job watching over Luke. Um, yeah. And he's trying to stay out of the way. The Obi-Wan um, book. Yeah, exactly. Yet he Perfect. continues to kind of get drawn into things and his instincts are still to help people. Um, and so very low level, some random fucking village and they've got a problem with Tusken Raiders and Obi-Wan reluctantly gets involved. Um, and then also in the middle of all that, you have Obi-Wan trying to do what he said he would do and, you know, connect and talk to Qui-Gon, but also dealing with his feelings of failure as a master, as a brother, as a father, like all these ways that he feels like he's failed Anakin and may in fact think he's dead. Stargriff merch when? Kill for a hoodie. I knew you can make something eventually. 
Do you guys know of the comic where Jar Jar's dad nearly ended it in Minecraft when all he had left was his son? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't remember that. Sad to see this end. I really liked you guys' dynamic. Mahler, when are you going to finally continue Arkham Gaming Series? Okay, the Force uh, that's another thing like I mentioned last week. I, I ran out of time for like gaming streams. I'll try and fit one in at some point for sure, though, because I do want to get through them. If the Star Wars universe was a, was real and you were born into it, what would you do? How would you live your life? Bonus, you have high midichlorian count, question for all three of you. I would live my life the way I feel like. Playing Bounty play, Hunter, play probably. Play. It's just I, too much fun. Yeah, I would use the dark side of the Force, and I yeah. would not care about the state of the galaxy. I would oh. only care about living as well as I could, fucking as many people as I could, fuck everything else. Um, <laughs> Especially Salacious Grub. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you should probably go to Jabba's palace, force choke Jabba, and be like, "Come <laughs> with me." Bro, a Jedi I'm can like... control their blood flow, man. Well, there you go, cheat codes. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> just got that. Uh, yeah. So I don't know, man. I'd I'd just be good to people, and then I wouldn't. You double cross me, you know. You see you later. That's it. I'd make everybody be good to me. No out mercy. of fear. I'd be like nah, how Boba I'd, Fett should have fucking been in his show. I'd be nice. I'd be nice to everyone, but treat people as they treat you. So if someone's a dick, then they're see see ya. Bye bye. You're dead. Simple as that. Whereas Ryan, I think, would just be like, "No, nah, I don't like you." <laughs> Too much. Him. Hey theory, just out of curiosity, when you make fanfic videos, are they all your original ideas, or do you take some that are requested to you? Because I have made Star Wars fan fictions; they're on Archive of our own, <laughs> under author name Creed underscore Nation. Uh, <clears throat> say ninety nine percent of them are my own. Some of them are fan requests. Is that Archive of our own? <laughs> no, Archive. Archive of our own. Hey boys, how about a Villeneuve made Revan movie? I he wouldn't do it. Um, he doesn't want to do pre existing film franchise stuff. Um, but I, I I like him as a filmmaker. Saw Quiet on the set, made me sick. Still can't believe Pervs and Pedos are still employed by Disney and Nick. What will it take to fix the system? What's Quiet on set? It's the so, full part documentary about the Dan Schneider like use of power to manipulate people in both sexual ways and uh sort of general ways some of the stuff i didn't know about was he would like dare people to do things and promise to pay them and then not do that or at least things that were like that um yeah there's there's too many examples of that throughout all of hollywood for it to not be a very significant systemic problem they need to fucking deal with and it's just a matter of people get to be so powerful when they were never expecting it and then they get to pull strings and they enjoy it too much to stop. And when you... and when people are away from their parents. Yeah, there's just there's, there's so not, little there's not supervision. Yeah. It's probably better today than it ever has been. But like when you go back to late nineties and then go all the way back to seventies and stuff, it's just like, yeah, the further back, the less protection there is and the more wild everything fucking is. Uh so yeah, there's the, you know we've had loads of exposed stories in different ways, but the I've only seen uh, the first episode of four, and so far it's not fun to watch as you'd Seems expect. To be a very prevalent thing in Hollywood. Yeah, we have a George Lucas meme. We do. Mm hmm. How would you all take Republic Commander? What's the meme? Where? I'm sharing it. Oh, oh, my mistake. There's George with apparently an umbilical cord. Sweet. All right. So, thank you for that, Mo Zamboni. That was a quick turnaround. Well, whatever works. <laughs> I wish George has another 500 years of life. Healthy, happy life. That's going to be a lot Me of political chords. How would you all like a Republic Commando sequel, maybe an Imperial Commando game? Disney would never. Uh, I would love that. Remember how they said they need to focus on games and then they stopped focusing on games? Filoni <laughs> raised Ahsoka. All right. Ooh. Oh, theory. Can you do a fan meetup and alert Nunavut? I mean, that'd be hilarious if I literally just hopped on a plane tomorrow to go there for that one super chat. <laughs> that'd be actually pretty cool. Uh... I'm black, and Ryan has my fave takes on Stargrift. Theory, please do more collabs with him in the future. I do. I'd love to, man. These they're busy. 
Ryan is a certified expert. Jason Solo for the win. I'd love to, man. I'd, I'd love to keep the show going. Love to. I'm I'm pulling out all the stops. Thank you, Jay, man. To keep the boys happy. In my opinion, I think it's pathetic that some people call George Lucas a sellout because he backs Iger and Proxy Fight. Bunch of flip flopping. I saw a lot of people that were like attacking and say, fuck you. And it's like, come on, man. Like, I. Uh, again, I took issue with one thing in his statement, which was clearly like a PR yeah. fucking drafted thing. Um, but I get it. Yeah. This feels like it won and Disney is Pennywise. What do you hmm. guys think of the theory that Dark Fallen Jedi can never be as strong in the dark side as true Sith? Maybe because tainted by the light? Yeah, maybe not as strong, but different. Yeah, I don't think they can fully like embrace the dark side quite as much like as like, can Sith they use force are heal? able to. Can they use force heal? I don't know. That'd be kind of cool. Maybe you could use both powers. Here, what's your take on people attacking you over your opinion on the red saber continuity in the acolyte? Are people attacking me? What's your uh, opinion of the red saber continuity? Uh, what do you mean continuity? But I don't know. I don't the question, yeah. Like, the question was your opinion on Red Saber continuity and acolyte. Well, I don't. I think anyone that should be anyone that sees a, a Red Saber should be axed. Like, see you later. Oh, you're saying like if you see anyone with a red lightsaber, you need to take them out. Yeah. Absolutely. Wait, no, no. What you're saying is if any Jedi sees someone who has a red lightsaber, they need to be killed. Otherwise, it's cannon breaking. Yep. That's what you mean, right? Uh, I, I, I agree with the, like the intention of like what you said. The only thing I'll say is not necessarily every single person we've ever, ever seen with a red lightsaber is a Sith, but I think it's pretty fair to say that the assumption matter. that you're talking about is if they know that it's a Sith. It doesn't matter if it's a Sith or not. It's 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 anything other than yellow, green, blue, you know, the purple. So the Jedi are going to be like, what the fuck is this? This is an evil color. Okay, cool. Are they a Sith? It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. They're using the dark side. Yeah, certainly they would, like, track them down. But, like, uh, for instance, who is the guy from Jedi Survivor? Uh, the one-armed fuck. Oh, Dagon Arrow. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I mean? Like he had a red lightsaber. He wasn't a Sith. Um Yeah, he wasn't so a like, Sith, but he but he but he was evil. So it doesn't it, matter if yeah, they're, they're part 100%. of the Sith cult or not. These people are they're so stupid if they're if they're actually trying to fight. I post my stuff and I disappear. I just post it on Twitter and I go, um, I'm not there to engage with uh with people like it, shots at me for nothing. But yeah, I'll the point of that debate, anything. I just think it, it's ridiculous that if if a Jedi were to see anyone with a red lightsaber they know that this person is using a aspect of the force that is not the light side. So clearly something is weird there. Whether and they would Sith investigate cultists, it and try to hunt it not. down. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so, okay. You know, the Sith haven't returned in a million, a dark sider returned. Okay. Well, it's the same fucking thing. It's the same exact thing. It doesn't, they don't have to be loyal to the Sith cult or the rule of two. You just have to be using the dark side. And that's, it, it's not like Kiyoti Muni's like, well, they're not a Sith per se, but you know, what, same fucking thing for Maul. Maul wasn't a Sith; he was a Sith assassin. Because at the time, Plagueis and Palpatine were the ones that were part of Rule of Two, and Plagueis and Palpatine always saw Maul as not as a Sith Lord, but as a tool, as a Sith assassin, as a Jedi assassin. So, and they bullshitted, and they told him a bunch of bullshit to make him feel like he was part of it. Literally, but they hey, never you're part of the club. Him. You're yeah, part yeah. of the club, but you know what? You're not actually so. Um, you're expendable. We're just using you as a tool. And so, right then and there, you could basically see Kiyoti Muni's words as uh, kind of null and void because, you know what? Maul isn't a Sith. So, how about that? He's just a guy with a red lightsaber who's evil. Literally, that's what he is, to be honest. He's been trained in the ways of the dark side. I mean, you know, people want to debate Star Wars with me on that. Like, man, like, it's your funeral. No problem. Well, that's interesting. I didn't know people were. I saw. I saw the numbers were pretty high, and I'm like, "Oh, this got good traction." But I didn't know people were actually arguing about it. I started the Clone Wars to see if Mauler might like it. It breaks space battles in the Force in the first couple of episodes. I now believe that the current Star Wars nonsense partially the fault of the Jedi. The cl the Clone Wars. Hmm. What do you think about that, Ryan? 
I I actually do think that the lack of care towards continuity in TCW uh, led to now I I don't know if it's at Lucasfilm or not, but I do feel like the the lack of care of continuity even within the movies to the Clone Wars. Um, I think we're seeing a lot of that now from even people that were there at Lucasfilm, like Dave Filoni, um, and what they're continuing to do with Star Wars. So I, I do agree. Balance of the Force is uh, just that equal. Two Jedi, two Sith. I really? disagree with that. I, I, I would say that the balance balance in the Force is the absence of darkness. Yeah, that's um, The absence of chaos. Um, that's what balance is. Because, I mean, you know, when Anakin is the chosen one, he restores balance to the Force. That is not done until he throws the Emperor over the fucking edge. That's when he restores balance. True. It's when all darkness is out of the galaxy. Not True, because there's but, one and one. Yeah, but Ryan, something. but then it, but yeah, but, but Luke exists and then Palpatine already transferred his essence into his exical body. So it, it's one and one, bro. Well, I, it, Wait, that's it, canon not, to but you. the thing is, but the thing is, it's not even two and two, and that's the, the reason I hate that argument. Because the first person I heard say that, I'm fucking. Um, with you. I, I know, but like the the two and two thing is nonsensical because in that same time frame, there's still like a multitude of Jedi that are living and doing shit. Yeah, I know. including one of them, Kane and Jarrus, Freddie Prince Jr.'s retarded ass. When he first gave that analogy, he forgot to count the character that he literally fucking plays. Yeah. But I guess it makes sense because he said he know learned everything he knows from Dave Filoni. So. Yeah, yeah. Remember two and fucking two. Yeah, exactly. Hey, good job, Freddie Prince. Awesome. You're a good way to talk to fans. Love you guys in the show. Been watching Theory and Mahler for a while, but this show introduced me to Ryan, who I'm also sub to now. We'll be watching mm -hmm. all three of you individually from now on. Awesome. Thanks, Epic Awesome. Sweet. Salacious bum. Gonna miss you guys together. Hope to see all of you at New York Comic Con next year or this year. Hey, Theory, after your Vader series is done, what's another character you would make a fan film about? Uh, I wouldn't because I'm never going to be dumping million dollar plus into a fan film that I can't make money from ever again. So <laughs> I will never, ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever make another fan film. <laughs> ever. It's too expensive. Um, but it would probably be Young Palpatine. Uh, where would you guys rank the Star Wars shows? Ugh. Low. <laughs> Non-existent. Unfortunately, the Imperial Commando game would be only on Tantus. Every mission you try to catch Omega. Every mission you... <laughs> <laughs> if you did an Imperial Commando game, that'd be funny. What do you think is a better villain? Who do you think is a better villain? Sion or Nihilus? Personally, I think Sion is more believable, even though he is dead. Nihilus seems inconsistent. Uh, Nihilus is very much just like a powerful force entity with no personality. You know what I mean? That's And that's not super interesting. Um Kreia is the one that brings that game together. Yeah. Sion's cool, though. He just doesn't die. Yeah, Sion's just a rage monster. Nihilus is just a fucking force monster. And Kreia is the one that the is, brains. like, the mastermind behind everything. I've been a fan of Mauler in theory for years. So Stargriff was a welcome surprise while it lasted. Also, thanks for the intro to my new fave, Racist Ryan. Yes. Hell Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Sajid. Sajid? I don't know how you say that. What if Kirak in Fila had received a vision of Order 66 and decided to go to Jedi Temple to warn them he arrived as Jedi Temple is attacked? He'd still get nerfed. Still get destroyed. The Dark Times of Palpatine's Empire was balancing the Force for theory. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that at all. Everybody sucks except for Mauler. Oh my god, right. true. Well, that marks the end of the Super Chats and the end of this show. We appreciate you guys. We had a lot of fun. I'm still going to try to talk to the boys, but, uh, you know, slim chance. Cross your fingers. Cross your toes. Cross your salacious be crumbs. Um, oh, man. Hell yeah. Yeah, we had a great Get time. Get me excited. We love you guys. You know, this is the, the closeout to, I guess, the, the show will be returning a few times a year at the end of every series. And we'll do, you know, a good stream, good live stream. But um, we're gonna be yeah, doing some we, events, some specials. Stargraft will be more special. It'd yeah, be like the Nick Rib. 
Don't forget the, the movies. Short lived, but I mean, I think it had the the biggest impact. It had more views than any podcast I've done here uh, in in such a dead time of Star Wars. I imagine you know what it's going to be when we come back for End of Acolyte, uh, and you know Ahsoka and Andor and all that. But I mean, um, people are going to like Stalker specials, you know. Yeah, I, I'm I'm still gonna I'm still gonna pitch the boys a couple ideas at the end, and we'll see what happens. But for now, the show is done. This is the final conclusion. We love you guys. We appreciate you. If we could get one final big like on the stream, uh, that'd mean a lot. It'd be cool. One final hurrah. So we appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for the super chats. Thanks so much for joining in and being part of the Star Grift. And we'll see you guys on social media as well as all of our other social media channels uh, and the individual channels. And we'll be returning sometime soon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you all very much. It was yeah, it's a been fun. fun. ride. Yeah. It's been fun and will continue to be fun. Mm-hmm. Star Griff reunion specials. I tagged all the boys in their channels in the description so you can go and check it out. And um and we'll see you guys next time. Cheers. We love see you. ya. Later. With theory and more. Situation. And you're sounding like a separatist.